Uh, just a minute, sir. One minute. This broadcasting. is live on the youtube channel uh, yes sir i am audible sir yes yes you are audible so you can start. Uh, good morning to one and all i am uh, dr atul sorbagar from dada patil rajale arts Commerce and Science College, Andhra Pradesh. I would like to extend my sense gratitude to all all the participants, and I would like to welcome and thanks to all the delegates, participant, those are present on the screen and off the screen for this international event. I am happy for your kind response and see. Uh, Uh, and to deliberate this uh, this that is a aquaculture for rural development i i welcome uh, all of you on the half of the three college that is department of zoology uh, from late ramesh varputkar art science commerce college parbani sonpet uh, kalika devi arts commerce science college shirur kasar bid Milia Art Science and Management College Hello. Science College Hello. Join. and I welcome to all of you in, in Now, that case I, what will do I, I welcome the all delegates and participant okay I request Dr Tanvir Patan sir to give the initial remarks for the conference am i audible sir Hello, I am Adrian. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning to one and all. First of all, on the behalf of Organizing Committee of International Conference on Aquaculture for Rural Development, organized under MOU between Department of Zoology, Kalika Devi Art Science and Commerce College, Shiru Kasa, District Guide, affiliated to Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwada University, Aurangabad. Department of Zoology, Late Ramesh Varpurkar, Art, Science and Commerce College, Sonpet, District Parbhani, affiliated to Swami Ramanand Sirs, Marathwada University, Nanded, Department of Zoology, Dada Patil, Rajay, Art, Science and Commerce College, Adinath Nagar, Taluka Pathradi, District uh, Ahmad Nagar, affiliated to Savitri Bai Kuli, uh, yes, Pune University, Pune, and Milia Art, Science and Management College, college deed affiliated to dr baba sahib ambedkar marathwada university aurangabad we would like to welcome all delegates participants for this international event dear friends and delegates we all know about about the hunger and malnutrition remain among the most devastating problems facing the world poor the fao state of food security report state that developing nations are not getting enough food to lead normal and healthy active life food demand and in particularly the demand for fish has continued to rise and it forecasted that expanding population and changing eating habit will make doubling of food output imperative in next 30 years this demand mainly has to be for the local food production system aquaculture contributes to poverty alienation and it provides employment to millions of people both in sector itself as well as in support services it also generates income and as the price for most of the food commodity falls fish prices are expected to rise reflecting the imbalance between demand and supply with this i would like to extend my sense of gratitude to the distinguished guests please allow me to express my sincere appreciation to professor dr kusum arunachalam professor and head environment and natural resources doon university kedarpur dehradun uttarakhand india dr binay kumar chakraborty former professor department of fishery bangladesh and dr 
Dilip Kumarja, Professor and Head, Department of Aquaculture and Faculty of Animal Science, Veterinary Science, Fishery, Ag Agriculture, Forestry University, Rampur, Chitwan, Nepal, for joining this international event. I welcome all of you and hope today's event will serve as a catalyst for strengthening international cooperation on transfer of innovative expertise. Today, we have about nearly about 100 participants joining this webinar and participants come together here to discuss on aquaculture for the rural development. I hope that we'll able to conclude certain agenda in this webinar. I am sure that we will have a fruitful and rewarding exchange in this webinar and wish very success to this important webinar. I look forward to learning outcome of this webinar. Before I take my leave of you, I would like to remind you, especially our moderator, to stick to our time schedule, not let over any session. I sincerely hope that you will enjoy today's debate and networking. Thank you for your perfect meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tanvir Patan, sir, who is the convener of this international conference uh, on aquaculture for rural development. Thank you for uh, giving the initial remark. I welcome uh, Dr. Rajdar Temkar, sir, Principal Dada Patil Rajdari Art, Science and Commerce College, Adhirat Nagar, uh, to, uh, to give the welcome address. Over to sir. Sir, uh, please unmute your mics. First, okay. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. Good morning to one and all. Today is a one day international conference on aquaculture for rural development, ICRD 2022 on 7th May, under the MOU between the Department of Zoology to celebrating Ajadika Amrut Moso and to bring together scholars, students, and administrators from the various countries and to discuss theoretical and practical issues in all fields of aquaculture and its role in rural development. Good morning to, first of all, I am thankful, Honorable Sri uh, Jaydatta Shir Sagar Anna, Secretary of other Section Samstha Bid, and uh, Honorable Sri uh, My Section Samstha's President Appa Sahib Rajale, the Kaka, President Dada Pil Rajale, Section Samstha Adinath Nagar, Honorable Sri uh, Parmeshwar Kadam, President Hanuman Section Prasarak Mandal Sonpet, encouraged for the organizing the one day national conference on innovation in basis science for sustainable development. I am thankful to our uh, executive trustee, Honorable MLA, Monika Te Raju Rajale, trustee Raul Rajale, College Development Committee Chairperson, Mr. Shivajara Rajale, and Secretary Honorable J.R. Pawar for guide us to develop the scientific environment for students from rural background in college campus like Pathardil. As our founder chairperson, let Dada Pildradale said that education for weaker sessions of the society, especially girls' child, and this is also our motto. We forward this message at act last 13 years till date and future too. I would like to extend my sense of uh, gratitude to inaugurated on this conference, Professor uh, Dr. Kusum Arunachalam, Professor and Head, School of Environmental and Natural Resources, Dun University, uh, Kedapuram, Dehradun, Uttarakhand, Professor Dr. Dilip Kumar Jha, Professor and Head of Department, Aquaculture Faculty of Animal Science, Veterinary Science and Fisheries Agriculture and Forest University, Rampur, Chitpawan, Nepal. This topic is Aquaculture for Rural Development in Nepal. I welcome the next speaker, Dr. Manya Kumar Chakrabarti, former professor, Department of Fisheries, Mr. Mr. Babun, Roman, Dhaka, Bangladesh. This topic of role of 
of aquacultures for rural development in Bangladesh. I would like to welcome and thanks to all the delegates, participants, those are present on the screen and off screen for this international event. I am happy for your kind response as you see that near about uh, maximum registration was done by student, teacher, research scholars from all over the India. It is my duty to congratulate my good friends, Principal Dr. V.D. Satpute, Principal Dr. V.S. Khandari, sir, and uh, Principal Dr. Ilyas Fajil, sir, for kind support for this event organized under MOU between Department of Zoology. Of the late Ramesh Varpurkar, Art Commerce Science College, Sonpet, District Parbani, appellated to Swami Ramanand Tirth Maratwada University, Nanded, Department of Zoology, Kalikadevi Arts, Commerce and Science College, Shirur, District Bid, Milia Arts, Science and Management, Science College, Bid, appellated to Dr. Babasar Ambedkar Maratwada University, Aurangabad, and Department of Zoology, Dr. Dada Pilar Adale, Art, Science, Commerce and College, Adinath Nagar. Taluka Patali District Ahmadnagar, appellated to Sayyidi Bhai Pune, Pune University, Pune. I hope in future you actively conducts, organize the scientific events workshop for students, farmers to exchange the ideas in international platforms also. I am sure that we will have fruitful and rewarding exchange in this conference. I wish you every success and I look forward to learning outcome of the conference. It is my duty to congratulate conveners and heads of the department zoology, Dr. T.S. Patansar from Kalika Devi Arts, Commerce and Science College, Shurur Bid, Dr. Santosh Rankham from late Rameshwar Purkar Arts, Science College, Sonpet, Dr. Atul Chorpagar, from my college, Dada Pildrazali Arts Science Commerce College, Adinath Nagar Taluka Patadi. I sincerely hope you will enjoy today's debate <coughs> and networking. Thank you for your participation. Thanks. You are not audible, Atul. Atul, sir, you are unmuted. Uh, you are muted. Yes, sir. Now. Yeah, yeah you yeah. are audible. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, Principal Dr. Rajdeep Temkar, sir, for giving the welcome address. Now I request Dr. Mukundraj Babura Patil from late Ramesh Varpudkar Arts, Commerce and Science College, Sonpet, District Parbani, to introduce. The chief guest, Dr. Mukundraj Patil, sir. Over to you. Yes, thank you, sir. Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. Mukundraj Patil, and he, I am here to introduce chief guest of this uh, international conference on aquaculture for rural development, Dr. Pro Professor Kusum Arunachalam. Uh, Ma'am has completed her master and doctoral degree in a subject botany. She had postdoctoral fellowship in plant microbe interaction at University of Herrenberg, Germany. Man has 24 years of te teaching experience and 27 years of research experience. She has uh, also held various positions in the Dune University, Dehradun. Notably, uh, she was vice chancellor uh, during August 2017 to January 2018. Uh, she was dean for various streams from 2013 to 2019. Uh, Ma'am uh, Ma was director of IQAC Dune University from 2013 to 2018. Uh, Ma'am uh, Ma is a head of School of Environment and Natural Resource Dune University, Dehradun since 2000. 13. During uh, this academic journey, uh, Ma'am has published uh, 114 research papers, 
uh, edited two books and uh, 13 chapters in the books uh, she has published. 15 articles are published in conference proceeding. Uh, she is a research supervisor and 15 students has awarded PhD under her prime guidance. And seven students are working uh, to pursue PhD. Uh, Ma'am has completed 14 research projects funded by various funding agencies. Um, uh, Ma'am has very decent uh, research record. Uh, she has 22,250 citations and 24 H index, which indicates the quality of uh, her research work. Considering this decent contribution, uh, Ma'am has received different awards and honors from government and various academic bodies. National Young Woman Bioscientist Award uh, uh, was uh, given by DBT, that is Department of Biotechnology, Government of India in 2005. Women Scientist Award was given by Society of Science and Climate Change and Environmental Sustainability in 2020. Commonwealth Youth Silver Award was given in 2007 and 8 by Commonwealth Secretariat Chandigarh. Women Bioscientist Award was given by Academy of Plant Sciences of India in 2018. Best Women Bioscientist Award was given by Pearl Foundation for Educational Excellence in 2017. Governor Research Award was given in 2020 for best research paper. Uh, Nari Shakti Samman, uh, this award was given in uh, 2021 by the Society of Biological Science and Rural Development, Lucknow. Uh, Ma'am is a recognized fellow of different scientific bodies like International Society of Tropical Ecology, Varanasi, India, National Environmental Science Academy, New Delhi, Academy of Forest and Environmental Science, National Institute of Ecology, Jaipur, International Society of Environmental Botanist, Scholar Academy and Scientific Society. She is also working as an expert for UGC NET in environmental studies and uh, Ma'am is a member coordinator for NAC Bangalore. Such a great versatile, uh, versatile and multidimensional personality is a chief guest for our today's program. And I feel very proud and pleased to introduce uh, um, Ma'am here. Uh, thanks to organizers giving me a chance and opportunity to introduce Ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mukundraj Patil, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bapparao Patil, uh, for uh, Thank you, it's a nice intro introduction of our uh, inaug inaugurator and chief guest of today's uh, international conference on aquaculture for rural development. Now I welcome and uh, request today's inaugural inaugurator and chief guest, Professor Kusum Arunacharan Madam, to give inaugural address. Thank you for such a nice introduction. Production, but that was too lengthy, I think. Uh, please just give me two minutes. I'm trying to uh, share my screen because I have uh, just prepared a small presentation. Just a minute. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Is the screen visible? Yes, sir, visible. Okay. Visible now. Yes, ma'am.
Okay, so a very warm good morning to all the organizers and Dr. Rajat Kamter, principal of the college, Dr. Chora Pagul, Dr. Baparao Patil, Dr. Santosh Ranakam, and the speakers of the different session, Professor Dilip Kumar Jha, who is from Nepal, and Dr. Vinay Kumar Chakravati. who is uh, speaking on aquaculture for rural development and he will be sharing the experiences from Bangladesh. So it's in fact a pleasure for me to uh, be a part of this very important conference, which is International Conference on Aquaculture for Rural Development. And I must say that uh, the collaborative workshop, which is in the line of the national education policy also, where the uh, what people are talking about that we have to move to the collaboration and we can't do anything on silo. So this is a real uh, good experience that so many people from different colleges have joined hands and are part of this uh, international conference on aquaculture for rural development. So as uh, during the introduction, Dr. Uh, Jara Bagar has already pointed out, sorry, Dr. Patil has pointed out that uh, my background is from botany, though so I'm not totally from the aquaculture field. But yes, I have been working on the ecosystems, on the environment, natural resource management. And uh, recently we are also looking at how, uh, the, what are the different micro algae, the micro alga in the Himalayan state of Uttarakhand and how this microalgae can be utilized for the biofuel production as well as for the uh, uh, for this uh, wastewater treatment of different industrial wastewater which is available. So I thought like uh, since we already have two uh, speakers who will be speaking on the aquaculture for rural development. So I thought let me speak on a slightly different aspect that is restorative aquaculture. its potential and future. So this is uh, going to be the top topic of my talk. So before going to the uh, concept of what is restorative, uh, restorative aquaculture and how it is important, uh, what kind of role it will be playing in our uh, aquaculture sector. So I would just like to give a brief background, like what is, uh, how important the eco sec uh, aquaculture sector is uh, for our country. So if you talk about Indian fisheries in our uh, culture, our tradition, this has been embedded uh, to a very large extent, and we can see that this particular shloka from the so, which says that Kesha Dhrit means Sharira Jagdish Hare. So, the god also is an incarnation of fish. So, how important the fisheries is in our Indian culture. So, this slide is just trying to depict that. So, uh, just I would like to give a brief snapshot of what is uh, this, uh, how important the aquaculture sector is for our country. We know that. Uh, nutrition, it's provide, uh, it is a very good source of nutrition, protein, and we are also looking after the micronutrient nowadays that the fisheries and the aquaculture can also provide uh, micronutrient for the growing human population. Then we have livelihood, export, activity, marine fisheries, mediculture, coastal aquaculture, inland fisheries, cold water fisheries, freshwater aquaculture. So we have so many diverse sectors which are available for uh, this aquaculture as, uh, in our country, in India especially. So capture fisheries to aquaculture, that is again very important aspect. And then we also have uh, about 14 million fishers and farmers which are directly dependent on fisheries and aquaculture sector. So just a brief uh, background, like what is, uh, the, what is the Indian fishery scenario? We have a coastline of about 8,118 kilometers which includes some 3,600 fishing villages. Then we have an ecological, economical ecological zone, which is about 2.03 million square kilometer. We have a large continental shelf, which represents 0.506 million square kilometer. We have rivers and canals. Then we have reservoirs, we have ponds, tanks, we have Oxbow lakes, derelict lake waters, and then we also have brackish water. So this is how rich we are in terms of the potential for fisheries and aquaculture in Indian context. Then this, uh, this slide is just giving a snapshot of like what is the fish jump plus resources of India. We have cold water where we have about 73 fishes. We have warm water, 544 fishes. We have brackish water, 143 species. 
then we have marine uh, uh, where we had around 1440 species and in total we have about 2200 species so as we know that india is a mega biodiverse country in terms of the terrestrial biodiversity but the fish, fish diversity is also equally rich in our country and just like the other form of biodiversity. Then we also have uh, the global position. Uh, we are third in the fisheries after China, Indonesia, and maybe now we are second, second in aquaculture. And then we have per capita fish availability of about uh, 8.54 kg based on 56% of population as we have in form of fish eating. And then we have annual export earnings, which is about 6.12 lakhs per uh, tons and eight, which is equivalent to 8,000 crores. And that is equivalent to 1.85 billion US dollars. So this is uh, uh, some background. And then you have Indian fish facts, 4.7% of global production. Then you have about uh, 7 billion US dollar at current price. So these are 18% of national agriculture exports, 2.5% of global trade. So how, uh, well, we are dependent on the aquaculture for our economic development and even for the rural development. This is some of the cold water fishes because I'm speaking from the Uttarakhand. So we have uh, uh, these two important fishes here, Mahashri and Trout, and they are facing the problem of, uh, I mean, uh, their uh, number is declining, their diversity is in threat because of large scale of this uh, dam. Uh, built up of the dam in the Uttarakhand, and we know that a large number of dams are being constructed on the river Ganges, the Bhagi Rekhi and and then these two important fishes in the Uttarakhand are uh, really in the, facing the in the, uh, endangerment. So there's a lot of uh, challenges like how to, I mean, how how to conserve these important species. So they have also set up a coal fisheries institute is there at Mukteshwar near Nantal. So they are working on conservation and development of this Mahashir and coal trout in the Uttarakhand, state of Uttarakhand. So these are some of the pictures from there, how they are doing this. And uh, uh, so this is uh, this particular slide shows that how much is the person contribution to the cultured fin fish produced by different countries. And here we can see that Asia, accounts for 89% of total global contribution. So the Asia where China, India, Indonesia, they are the major players. So we have a very huge potential for uh, the surface fishes and aquaculture in our country. Then this is a potential of aquaculture in India. We know that just like the Green Revolution, recently the uh, Prime Minister of India is also talking about the Neil Kranti or the blue aquaculture revolution or blue revolution in our country. So the, the recent uh, like uh, plan also the prime minister this finance minister uh, has also talked about like how much uh, importance we are going to give to the aquaculture apart from the regenerative agriculture which is another important sector so the potential of agri uh, aquaculture is going to in increase in times to come and uh, it has been estimated that the first requirement by 2025 is going to be around 16 million tons. And aquaculture has to provide 10 million tons of this uh, fish requirement, which will be there in times to come. And this, is, this particular uh, map shows what are the potential of aquaculture in our country. We have cold water aquaculture, which is there in the Himalayan states, as well as in the Northeast. Then we have freshwater aquaculture, we have marine, uh, marine culture, we have coastal aquaculture. So the potential is very huge and uh, the, uh, like we have to see how much we can tap these resources in times to come. But we also have to see that what are different uh, practices which are already going on and how the government of India has been working for last so many years to, uh, to build up on this uh, fisheries and aquaculture sector in the our country and we know that we have integrated fish farming system which is there in different parts of the and they are all region specific so depending on the flexibility for region specific adaptive uh, adaptability for the component integration so that is now again we have this kind of integration where integrated fish farming is playing very important role we also have this wetland management with aquaculture and integrated farming because wetland we know are getting degraded as the population is increasing and we are having the land use, land cover, habitat degradation, and most of our land use is being changed and converted for your 
for uh, building up the infrastructure. So all this wetland, wet wetland, which were the part of our tradition and cultures are now slowly and slowly they are getting reduced. And we know how important the wetlands are for our uh, systems as they provide a lot of ecosystem services in terms of uh, uh, food and other ecological services also. So this is another area, fish culture in pens, which is also there being uh, developed in our country. Then we have fish duck farming system, which is another integration, which is also very famous. In different parts of the India, then we also have fish integration with makhana. This is very recent, like this makhana, uh, which is a very popular crop and it fetches a lot of um, money in the market. So this fish integration with makhana has been done in the inland fishery, especially in the states of uh, uh, like uh, UP and Bihar and P, where this kind of integration is playing very important role in the upliftment of the rural communities. So this is a very important sector. Then we have ornamental fish farming. So we have a lot of uh, uh, like uh, potential for the ornamental fish farming, and we know that high potential for large scale exports. So the students who are uh, studying the fisheries, they have a huge uh, demand, they know that there's a huge demand for this ornamental fish farming. And uh, if they can, uh, they can make their career entrepreneurship opportunities exist in this uh, sector, a lot of, uh, and we know that a lot of unicorns, unicorns are also coming up. And then I came to know that there are two unicorns which are totally supported by the aquaculture sector. So the uh, students also have a very huge potential uh, that they can trap the sector and be part of the this uh, economic upliftment of uh, themselves as well as also provide employment to the other people, the rural people and uh, the entire supply chain. The entire supply chain has to be managed and that supply chain will create a lot of jobs, a lot of income generating activities and opportunities for different sector of people. So this. Uh, has to be tapped by the students, the youngsters who are coming uh, uh, out of the colleges and universities, that how they have to uh, build this entrepreneurship uh, and they have to inculcate the entrepreneurship in their, uh, this fishery and aquaculture provides a very good scope for the uh, entrepreneurship for them. So this goldfish, we know that it is a very valuable uh, fish and it has an uh, annual oh, trade of about, uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Okay. okay. Please just tell me if there's. So we have this uh, goldfish, and we know that goldfish is fetch gold also. So we can compare it with the gold because it is fetching a lot of mark money in the international market, and this uh, it has a potential of generating about nine hundred million US dollar on the annual global trade. So this is uh, how uh, important it is for the uh, this entrepreneurship. And then we have aqua tourism. Aqua tourism is also growing uh, at a very large scale, not only in our country, but in different parts of the world. So people now, because they don't, they haven't seen many of this uh, pristine ecosystem. So they have seen how the, uh, I mean, the youngsters, the younger generation, the young population, they just see how the fish has come to their table, but they don't know where it is going, where it is really found, how it is, what is its natural setting. So the aqua tourism has a lot of potential. And even in our country, we see that this is growing, especially in the Northeastern state. Uh, we have this eco tourism in Northeast India, where a lot of people, they go and they are contributing to this eco tourism uh, through the aquaculture sector. So this is also another important area of which can be trapped in times to come. And we know that then there are some other value additions also, like we have cold chain capacity for small farmers, then we have fish pickers, food curry, et cetera, which is also being made out of this uh, fishes and other uh, things. Then we have women enterprises, which are very uh, well established in Mumbai and Kolkata because there's a lot of supply demand in this particular city. So the women enterprises are doing very uh, good job in some of these uh, areas. Then we have, this muscle and oyster processing, which is uh, very good way in the case. So in case also we see that value addition of this factory uh, of aquaculture has really done in a very good way. So now, uh, since the aquaculture sector is growing, the fishery sector is growing in a big way, then we have the old fish market markets are also. Uh, 
seeing transformation. So we can see the two pictures. The upper picture shows the old fish market in uh, Amlapuram, Andhra Pradesh, and how how nicely it has been it has uh, been revamped. The new look you can see how uh, it has totally changed. So, so it has become very sophisticated. The new fish market in Amlapuram AP you can see here. So this is the potential of fisheries and aquaculture in countries. So it is going to play a very great role in times to come for economic development, especially uh, for the rural people also. And then we have this kind of new fish outlets in uh, Andhra Pradesh. Andhra Pradesh is the major uh, aquaculture producing state in our country. So they are really doing wonderful jobs. So they have come up with this new fish outlets in the Andhra Pradesh. So we have, so in other states also, we can replicate such kind of things, which in Andhra Pradesh they are doing a great thing. So this, uh, what is the takeaway message, no message from whatever has been told just now is that uh, we need only a minimum of rupees 20,000 profit per acre per year. So this is how much, uh, what is the economics of this, then this is also helping in some other ecosystem uh, environment to, like bioremediation of wastewater, which can also provide you some earnings, high potential of new science for application because you have all the value chain and and if we can, uh, we can uh, just address the different value chain, what are the challenges, what are the bottlenecks in different value chain. So you have a lot of potential of uh, science application also to solve those uh, value chain problems. The entrepreneurship reward like no other farming system. So as I told you that there are some unicorns which have, are totally based on the aquaculture. And these uh, unicorns are going to grow. So, so uh, we will be having more and more unicorns in the times to come because the aquaculture sector is going to grow in a much larger way. And we know that it is uh, growing at the rate of 6.8% per year, which is just uh, in comparison to the agri sector, which is only about 2 to 3%. So that uh, has a lot of potential for uh, the future generation that they can uh, make their future, they can make their uh, career in the sector. So now uh, after uh, just uh, having this uh, background, now I will come to my talk that is the restorative aquaculture, its future and potential. So why I'm talking about the restorative aquaculture. So we know that this particular decade, which we know as the decade of ecosystem restoration. So the United Nations has uh, decided that this particular decade, which will be spanned from 2021 to 2030, has to, we have to do a lot. We have to restore our damaged, degraded, and destroyed ecosystem. So last decade, the last decade was the decade for biological diversity, and the current decade is the decade for ecosystem restoration. So this 10 years time, so this 10 years time from 2021 to 2030 is going to be very crucial that how can we restore our degraded ecosystems, and that also talks about our wetlands, our water bodies, which can be a potential uh, uh, I mean, they can be a good candidate for the aquaculture sector in times to come. So this uh, this ecosystem restoration, we know that it has emerged from the bone challenge. The bone challenge was the initiative of the uh, government of Germany. And in 2011, they come up with this idea that we have to bring about 150 million hectares of degraded and deforested landscape into restoration. by 2020 and 350 million hectares by 2030. So the Germany has been uh, on the, I mean, they were the initiator for this entire ecosystem restoration decade. And India has also, uh, uh, is a part of this entire campaign. And we have also said that we are also going to, uh, uh, I mean, 21 million hectare to 26 million hectare. This is the new target. Uh, the India has also set its target of 26 million hectare, which has to be restored by 2030. So that is uh, how important that if you talk about this decade, in this decade, we also have to meet some of the sustainable development goals. The 17 sustainable development goals, which were initiated in 2015 and already we are in 2022 and the time is very short and by 2030, uh, we have to see that how much we can achieve on in terms of the 17 uh, sustainable development goals. So this, uh, this decade, which is spanning from 2020 2030 is very, very critical for the humanity because uh, we have this 10 years where we have to see that how can we restore our 
damaged, degraded, and destroyed ecosystem. The target is already set. We have to have 350 million hectares on the global scale, 26 million hectares at the in national scale. Then we have this. Uh, uh, 17 development goals, sustainable development goals. And we know that uh, this aquaculture and fishery sector can help in a great way. One of these goals is totally, I mean, dedicated to this, uh, that is life uh, below water. So life below water, if you talk about this 14 SDG, it is totally dedicated to this fisheries and aquaculture sector. Then we have this no poverty, zero hunger, good health, so all this, they have, I mean, we can see that this, uh, this 14th goal can be uh, at the center and then all the other goals can complement. So this fisheries and aquaculture sector will play a very important role in achieving all these 17 sustainable development goals. Then very recently, we also had this uh, Glasgow summit. We know that uh, in the COP26 in Glasgow, and uh, they have been talking that uh, as if you have to keep our global emissions, we have to cut down, we have to go to the zero emission, net zero emission. By 2050, if you want to keep our temperature within the limit of 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius from the uh, this uh, pre-industrial uh, time. So we have already the average temperature rise is 1.1 degree, already we have now reached to that 1.1 degrees Celsius. So the target is that, uh, the challenge is that we have to keep it within the limit of 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius. But uh, this, if we don't restore, so this in this challenge, when we have to uh, have, we have to cut down on our emission, we have to cut down on our carbon footprint. So how this restorative aquaculture is going to play a very critical role. So we know that we have to also tackle this demand of food production because the population is going to rise. And uh, by 2050, we will be having about 9 billion population. So 9 million population, so you also have to keep in uh, uh, mind that you have to feed the 9 million population. And then we also have a challenge of uh, cutting down our, our carbon emissions. So this aquaculture uh, plays very critical role here because from the other agriculture, we, we know that about 70 to 80 percent, is because it is food production, which is accounting for nearly one quarter of global greenhouse gas emissions. And it is also responsible for 70 to 80 percent of freshwater usage and habitat degradation, respectively. So this is a study which has been done in 2018, and they say that uh, this uh, food production, and we have to have this food production for the growing population. We know that uh, population will reach to uh, about nine mil billion by 2050. But if we are continuing on this, unsustainable agriculture practice. Hello, yeah. Hello. Hello. Is it is it fine with my presentation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can continue, ma'am. Okay. So this was a study which came out in 2018, and then what there was there's another study by Nair et al. in 2021, and they say that aquaculture, the growing of animals and plants in the water has also often developed at the expense of the environment. So they say that even though if we are talking about the aquaculture, that it has a very huge potential, but again, it is not sustainable. It is being done on the expense of environment where we have habitat degradation, water pollution, impact of wild fish stocks and diseases, which are associated with the early year of commercialized aquaculture development. And it is continuing to challenge the environmental sustainable development of the industry today. So this study has said that although aquaculture is having a great potential, but the kind of aquaculture we are following Uh, we are still practicing is uh, not sustainable. It is not uh, in line with the environmental protection or we have to also think about the environmental protection because now we have to see that uh, the net zero carbon emission by 2050 have to be achieved. So this restorative aquaculture has uh, come up as a great, uh, uh, I mean, how we can help in restorative aquaculture. So this restorative aquaculture occurs when commercial or subsistence aquaculture provides direct ecological benefit to the environment with the potential to generate net positive environmental outcomes. So now we have to think about how we have to make our aquaculture sector environmental friendly and how it can be developed. It can be developed in such a way that we get both economic returns as well as the environmental sustainability or the ecosystem services which we are getting from the, uh, this uh, uh, aquaculture are also maintained. So we know that if, if we want to uh, 
go for this restorative aquaculture, then we have to reduce the impact first. So the first step will be to reduce the impact of the harmful uh, activities uh, which are going on. And then we have to move towards the ecological sustainable development. And then we have, in that way, we will be able to achieve the restorative aquaculture which will be, uh, uh, I mean, also will provide us income, will provide opportunities of income generation for different sectors, especially the rural communities, because most of the, uh, the threat of the climate change is going to be on the rural communities. The people who are well off, the people who are living in the cities, they are not going to suffer from this climate change. We know that the climate change impact are already being seen as uh, the, uh, frequency of the floods, the cyclones has been increasing and every time you see that when there's a cyclone, the people who are living in the coastal area and who are dependent on the fisheries and if they are doing some kind of aquaculture, they are really badly hit by this kind of uh, climate uh, impacts, uh, which are in the form of cyclones and floods. So uh, the restorative aquaculture will be helpful, for, especially for the people, the rural people, the poor people who are living in the coastal areas or also in the in land areas and doing their uh, fishing or fish farming. So these are the, uh, I mean, the global principles of restorative aquaculture, which have been set up in 2021 by the Nature Conservation Conservancy. And they have come up that uh, uh, just to have this uh, restorative aquaculture, uh, the countries have to follow certain kind of principles. So they have uh, come out with some six principles for uh, restorative aquaculture. And they say the principle one, it aims at that the farms are cited where environmental benefits can be generated. So where we have to go for aquaculture farming, the aquaculture farming will be done on certain sites, such sites where we can also have the environmental benefits uh, simultaneously along with the aquaculture production. So that is the first principle of this uh, eco global principles of administrative aquaculture, which have been outlined by the Nature Conservancy. Then we they also talk about the the principle two, which says that the culture species that can be that can provide the intended environmental benefits. So the cultural the species, the species which are, uh, I mean, indigenous species, the focus will be on indigenous species also, how we can uh, enhance the number of production of indigenous species, which are also part of the culture and tradition of the local communities, the traditional communities who are living in that particular region. So that should be, in, I mean, uh, targeted. And the principle three says that prioritizing the farming equipment that enables the delivery of environmental benefits. So we have to go for such kind of farming equipment, which is also helping in the simultaneous uh, environmental benefits. So that kind of uh, uh, prioritization of the farming equipment, the principle three speaks about. Then we have principle four, which says that adopt farming management practices that can enhance local ecological environmental benefits. So the traditional knowledge systems becomes very important here. The traditional farming communities, their knowledge, how they have been doing this. Because aquaculture is nothing new. This has been uh, done from the millennia. We know that in the Asia, South Asian country like China, India, Indonesia, this aquaculture was done from time immemorial. So the people that are very well aware of what we are not paying. I mean, we are not uh, in, uh, integrating their traditional knowledge in this modern science. So the integration of traditional knowledge system with the modern techniques is uh, all about this principle before is talking about that we have to give equal importance to the traditional knowledge system of the traditional societies which are living in different parts of our country. Then the fifth principle, it says that strive to farm at an intensity and scale of culture that can enhance ecosystem outputs. So that we have to really see what is the farm and intensity but uh, the intensity and the scale of this culture. So that also we have to see that ecosystem outcomes, the ecosystem services should also so be taken into account when we are trying to see like what will be the intensity of farming, what will be the scale of culture. So that also we have to uh, take into consideration the environmental benefits, the ecosystem benefits, which will come out from that particular farming practice. Then the first, principle six speaks about recognize the social and economic value of the environmental benefits provided. So generally, when we talk about in ecology, we know that uh, when we talk about biodiversity, we know that biodiversity is the basis of our sustenance. Biodiversity is providing, it is critical for our living, it is critical for our survival. 
And if we don't do this restorative aquaculture, if we don't, uh, I mean, implement in those regions which really needs it, then this uh, we are going to have this. Lot of our fish species are going to be. Uh, they will be in danger and it has already been appointed out by the IUCN that if we don't do anything now, this uh, the restoration uh, decade of uh, UN decade of ecological restoration gives us uh, an opportunity that we have to really work hard. And if you want to prevent the extinction of 1 million species, so 1 million species by 2021, the IUCN has come out with this data that if we continue with this kind of practices, if we don't do anything with our carbon emissions, and then the biodiversity loss is also inevitable and we may leave, uh, lose about 1 million species by 2021. And in this 1 million, we may have a lot of our fish species, the other aquaculture uh, species. So that also we have to see that social and economic value of the environmental benefits also have to be taken into consideration. So these are the, the six important global principles of restorative aquaculture which the Nature Conservancy has outlined and uh, this has been very recent development in 2021 we, they have come up with this kind of principles for the restorative aquaculture now we know that the environmental benefits of restorative aquaculture what is that why we are talking about the environmental benefits so when we are talking about the ecosystem services that is the environmental benefits which this aquaculture can also provide us simultaneously for example here we can say that uh, we can see that a single hectare of restorative farm of aquaculture can remove more than half a ton of nitrogen and this half a ton of nitrogen may cost around 50 US dollar to remove through wastewater treatment. So this is, um, uh, I mean, this is one ecological uh, service which this uh, restorative eco uh, ecosystem can uh, provide us. Then we also, it can filter up to 20 million, 25 million gallon of water per day. And that is equivalent to about 40 Olympic size swimming pools. So this is another important potential of this single hectare of restorative farm, which can provide us simultaneously along with providing us this shellfish and sea waves. Then, then it also can increase the abundance of wild fish by up to five tons per year. So if you have uh, this restorative aquaculture, then it can also help in increasing the wild fish population. So the abundance of wild fish by up to five, 10 per year. So that is very important, uh, I mean, uh, contribution which it can play. Then capture carbon dioxide in coastal waterways and prevent social acidification. So it is playing very important role in net CO2 emission because it is uh, uh, a very, uh, I mean, kind of uh, activity which is not generating any kind of CO2, but in fact, it is also helping in the CO2 sequestration in the coastal waterways, and that is helping in the as uh, preventing the acid uh, ocean acidification. And we know that ocean acidification is a very alarming problem for our uh, equity biodiversity. So we have to tackle the ocean acidification. There also, this uh, restorative aquaculture can be. Uh, playing a very important and critical role. So this was another important study which has come out in 2022, very recent. And this is a climate-friendly seafood, the potential for emission reduction and carbon capture in the marine uh, aquaculture. So this has been published by the Uni uh, University of Adelaide in Australia. And this describes how marine aquaculture could significantly reduce its climate impact with exciting potential to move the industry to a net zero or even net positive impact on these houses. So this uh, very recent study, very important study, and I think we should all just uh, go through this, how it can be, uh, uh, they have just shown the potential, how it can uh, help us in moving towards the net zero, even that positive impact on the house gas emissions. So this was uh, now uh, restorative agriculture has, has the potential to go a step beyond impact reduction and actually uh, improve our marine environment. So they say that um, most of the country, we know that there is a significant potential of, for a restorative aquaculture industry to be expanded and creating valuable opportunities to improve ocean health while generating economic returns. So every country has this potential for restorative aquaculture. It's not that only in India we are talking about it. The global scale also, they adopt, and the, for the Western countries, Australia, the European countries, they already all, all, all started implementing this restorative aquaculture because they are moving towards a nature-based solution. So nature-based solutions 
they are now being implemented in the developing world where uh, the uh, green infrastructure, the nature based solutions are going to be the main key player in the, uh, our, this climate change fight and the fight for, uh, I mean, if you want to keep our uh, ecosystem healthy or the planet healthy. The nearly 50 million square kilometer oceans have been found to be environmentally suitable to farm with restorative aquaculture techniques, and that's roughly five times the size of China. So this study also says that we have a lot of potential for this restorative aquaculture to be implemented in different parts of the world, and about 50 million square kilometers of the ocean can be used for this purpose. Then we could, we, we could see even more benefits to ocean health if existing aquaculture operations are formed to implement restorative restorative practices. So the studies has also given us some takeaway home messages that how the aquaculture, the restorative aquaculture can help not only in providing uh, us with the income gener uh, generation activities, but can also help in providing a lot of ecosystem services and also fight against the climate change. So in fact, the nutrient removal benefits of this bi and and seaweed farming was recently estimated to provide us about 84 to 50 505 US dollar per ton of nitrogen reduction that I have already spoken. And so that is a lot of potential is there, potentially worth an additional 1,000 to 3,000 US dollar per hectare per year to commercial or recreational fisheries, to sustainable by wall and seaweed farming operation scales to three times their current size by 2050. So these are some of the findings of this particular paper, which it is showing that how the aquaculture potential can help in in, uh, I mean, uh, restoration of our degraded uh, coastal areas and degraded uh, water bodies, and also can help us in uh, climate change fight. So the integration of the traditional, then this, uh, uh, this uh, the principles of this uh, aquaculture, restorative aquaculture, uh, aquaculture also talks about the integration of traditional indigenous knowledge of aquaculture into restorative practices. And that will have a social and cultural benefits, including greater access to ways of being health and healthy and well-being and equally and better outcome for the involved. So the integration of this traditional indigenous knowledge is very critical if you want to implement restorative aquaculture. And here I would like to give you an example of this uh, zero value, this fatty fish. Paddy cum fish cultivation, which is practiced in the Apatani tribe in Jiro Valley. And the Jiro Valley is in the lower Suban city district of Arunachal Pradesh. So I had a chance to work in the Arunachal Pradesh because I was there from 2000, just after doing my PhD from Northeastern Hill University, Shillong, which I completed in 1996. Then I moved to Itanagar. And in Itanagar, there's an institute called Northeastern Regional Institute for Science and Technology. And so I was teaching in the in Department of Forestry from 1998 to 2006, I was there. So we had this opportunity of uh, doing some studies in the Jiro Valley, and we were looking after how shifting cultivation, which has been practiced in entire uh, Northeast, how it its economical consequences, how it is degrading the environment. So there we saw that this paddy cum fish cultivation, which is being pra practiced mainly by the Apatani tribe, uh, is a very progressive agriculture community of Arunachal Pradesh. So this is a very, uh, I mean, important kind of integrated resource management system. So they have a very highly efficient resource management system where they are doing this uh, paddy cultivation along with the fish. So this is a typical house. So they all have the houses made out from the bamboo and this bamboo also grows in the vicinity. Uh, this is a special type of bamboo, which we call as apatani bamboo and it grows, it is a single term bamboo which grows near their household. So they grow it there. And this uh, this bamboo, which is a philostachys, just commonly known as the uh, Apatani bamboo, and philostachys is the scientific name. So this is grown only uh, for construction of these houses, for fencing, and all other kind of implements. The agricultural implements, the household implements, they are dependent on this bamboo species. Then they have a very huge forest on the just uh, just behind this bamboo, they have a very good forest cover, then, then they have an agriculture. So this is a very typical house and forested area, which is around the paddy fields at Hong Village in Jiro Valley of Arunachal Pradesh. And it is very efficient um, integration of different resources, the natural resource management, how fisheries, how forestry, how aquaculture, 
and how agriculture is being integrated with the human in center. So very efficient and very uh, beneficial also for the area. And here, this is a young, uh, this is a woman of Apatani tribe and they have a very distinct their identity, they have this nose plug, so uh, they are very different from other Apatani, uh, from other Arunachali tribes. So they have this kind of nose uh, plugs, which they called as Yaping Harlo, and the traditional tattoo marks on their nose, forehead and chin. So they are very unique and this practice which they are following in this Jiro Valley of this uh, rice, uh, wet rice scum, uh, fish paddy cultivation is also very unique system of natural resource management. So what they're doing here is that 48.38% of the land they're using uh, for the paddy cum fish cultivation and about 32.64% of, of the, of the uh, land is being for train uh, this clan forest because the forest here belong to the communities. So they are also keeping the forest intact. And then 16.441% of the bamboo forest they are growing uh, in the vicinity of their uh, valley, all this bamboo forest from where they can meet the requirement of uh, Bamboo, which the houses for houses for agriculture implements for the other kind of implements and all those things. And then they also have kitchen garden. Kitchen garden also they are having every household has got a kitchen garden of about 2.75%. So the Apatani community has evolved the sedentary farming in the form of a wet rice cultivation in the uh, this valley of uh, lower Sudan City, Jiro Valley, using the indigenous techniques. So just wanted to know how this the traditional knowledge system can also be very important. They can play a very important role in the restorative aquaculture. So we have to, they are the most important stakeholders when we are talking about the restorative aquaculture. So this is how they do practice this uh, rice cultivation, rice fish cultivation in the valley. And this is a very unique practice which they are having and which has evolved from, uh, I mean, many, many years. So it has been said that for last 500 years, these Apatanis are doing this kind of cultivation. They came to this valley about 500 years back. So they have a very sustainable, very environmental friendly way of doing this particular aquaculture. So how they are collecting the fishes from the trenches. These are the rice fields and these muds which they are making. This, uh, this bunch which they make around the rice field, that is really strong. And this, will, this really help in keeping the fishes intact in this paddy fields. And this, uh, the, the watershed, because they have a very good forest cover on the background, so the, all the water from the watershed, it comes and into the water bodies, uh, sorry, into this uh, rice fish, which they have. And this is uh, they have evolved through the traditional uh, traditional knowledge system. So these are terrace fields. Uh, you can see the terrace, they have this kind of terracing because it is a very uh, good uh, valley. And, and that is why they call it as a zero valley. It's a very round shaped valley. So these terrace fields are landscapes on slight incline so very uh, a slight slope gentle slope they have and they have created this kind of landscape for terracing so that the water runs into each field at a high end and out at low end so this is how this traditional knowledge which they have used in uh, uh, making this kind of terrace system and then they use this bamboo net traps which are placed on the burns between two plots to restrict movement of fish so this is the indigenous knowledge which they have uh, used in this that they are using this bamboo net traps which are being placed between the two buns and then this restrict the movement of the fishes from one uh, area to the another area. So this is a common carp which uh, is being harvested in this paddy fields. This woman you can see that she's collecting this common carp and you have lush green paddy fields which are also green. So the economics, we also did the economics of this paddy cultivation and found that the output input ratio uh, of this paddy cultivation, which they were, this, they were following this Apatani tribe, was much, much higher uh, this in compared to even the Punjab and uh, Haryana state, if we talk about the ecosystem services which they were providing. And even the production of this agriculture, uh, this uh, paddy was much, much higher in this kind of uh, system. So here you can see how this uh, young girl, she's also collecting only the matured fish they are taking out from the water. And then they do this collection from early July and the rest are kept going till August. So they don't, uh, they do it in a very sustainable way. So they don't collect everything at a time. So only the matured uh, fishes they collect during the July and then they keep the young population till August. And that is how uh, this uh, sustainable supply is being maintained. Now this is fish moving inside paddy field. You can see how they 
paddy fields looks like. So this is the fishes which are moving within the paddy fields. And they call them in local language, they are known as Aji Niglai. So Aji Niglai, this is the local name of this type of fishes which they are going in the paddy fields. So this system of integrated farming, which is by using combination of paddy and fish together, has claimed to be one of the most productive and efficient agriculture in the state of the Uttarakhand, in, in fact, in the entire Northeast. And we have also seen its economics and we compared the economics with the, uh, the, the modern agriculture fields which are there in the Punjab and Haryana and found that the input output ratio, if you, the economics, if you uh, calculate, then these are much, much efficient system, even in comparison to this modern system which are being uh, adopted in the other states. So because of this uh, very unique nature, in April 2014, the Apatani culture landscape was listed under the tentative list of UNESCO World Heritage for their unique agriculture technique, which is being practiced within the community. So this UNESCO has prescribed some 10 criteria to be, uh, to be considered as the UNESCO World Heritage site. And every site has to meet about at least Two of these norms, so Apadani cultural landscape has made it to the tentative uh, UNESCO World Heritage uh, List for Unique Settlement System and uh, man, uh, this man and nature relationship. So they are still working, the work is still going on. So one criteria they have already completed. So they are also working the paper, what is going on for another criteria. So if they do it, so they may be enlisted as one of the UNESCO's World Heritage Sites in future. So. So uh, what I wanted to just this picture, which is a very important picture because uh, you all must be aware of uh, Padma, the late Padma Vibhushan Sundarlal Bhavanaji and uh, he hailed from the Uttarakhand and uh, this is the man behind the Chippo movement. So uh, due to COVID, we lost him in 2021. Last year, he died because of COVID. But uh, he was, uh, I mean, he was advocating that ecology is a permanent economy. So right from this young, young age when he was, uh, he also participated in the freedom fight moment. And then he used to advocate that ecology is a permanent economy and he was the man behind who was protesting against this large uh, construction of large da uh, dams in the Trejai ecosystem of Himalayan region. And then he was also advocating that we have to grow, we have to grow uh, this uh, agroforestry, we have to uh, grow the uh, tree farming. We have to go for the tree farming in the Himalayan hills, not for the agriculture farming because the land holding is very, very fragmented. And with that, we have been seeing a lot of migration which is taking place from the hill states and a lot of ghost villages are existing in the Uttarakhand now. So uh, we have, the time has come that what he was saying uh, about 50 to 60 years back, even the UNESCO or the United States uh, UN, uh, they all are talking about that we have to move towards the sustainable management practices and in the decade of ecological restoration this uh, 2020 to 2030 2021 to 2030 gives us an opportunity that at least we should uh, move in that direction now because if you don't do anything if you just keep on degrading your environment, degrading your ecosystem, then the 1 million species which we are going to lose by 2021 will be, will be a reality. So uh, in the, those, uh, and our own survival will also be stayed because we are seeing the kind of heat waves, the kind of floods, the kind of cyclones, and every time the people who are the vulnerable society who are living in the rural areas, in the mountain areas, in the coastal areas, they are going to be hit most by this climate change uh, impact. So the time has come that we all should join hand and we have to see that how can we restore our ecosystem and the restorative aquaculture can play a very great role in this endeavor that uh, we can uh, have sustainable future, we can have uh, we reduce our carbon footprint, we have net, net zero emission, we keep our temperature, global temperature within the limit of 1.5 degrees Celsius and also we prevent the loss of our biodiversity, which is very, very valuable to all of us. So with this uh, slide, I would like to stop my presentation. And if you have uh, any question, I'm free to answer the queries of the youngsters. Especially. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for your wonderful uh, deliberation about the Aquaculture for rural development. Uh, you, in your talk, you uh, talk on the restoration of the aquaculture, which is a uh, commercially based. 
also you talk on the global principle of restoration in the aquaculture their policy making and the benefits towards the fresh water and the marine water aquaculture development also also you discuss on uh, global compare of the aquaculture and also the opportunity of aquaculture for rural development uh, in terms of the food in terms of the money and in in terms of the integrated aquaculture development uh, also in the india so thank you very much for, uh, very much ma'am for your such a wonderful lecture uh, i i request audience if any any questions related to this you can ask to ma'am chat boxes there is no question can't see any question uh, you can you can uh, put your question on chat box also i think there are no questions i don't see any questions on the chat box so i hope i could do some gestures because uh, fishery is not my field but yes i have been working on this uh, natural resource management and uh, environment so i could link that Court, let me link the ecological restoration decade with this uh, aquaculture. How innovative aquaculture is going to be very critical in the decade of ecological restoration, and everybody has to play a part in that. Thank you so much. Good morning, madam, for your excellent presentation. Uh, yes, Chakul sir. Yeah. Thank you yeah, so much. Thank you. you. So if. Uh, you have presented here yes uh, something at least uh, or natural pradesh or any hilly areas also they are doing integrated yes, yes. aquaculture so yeah. i think certainly it uh, boosts the economy rather rural economy and one thing you have suggested yapping hurlo the is like a nose mask now we are wearing mask so they have already tradition ha yes <laughs> unique yes, yes. so so that's why the people the, the traditional society they are really i mean they have evolved in such a way that what we are doing now they were knowing long time back so we have to really yes. i mean respect the uh, respect the knowledge system and now the government of india is also seeing Uh, in recently they had this department of science and technology they had a national network program on documentation of traditional knowledge system and in that in doon university we were also part of this network program where we tried to document the traditional knowledge system of this bhutia tribes which are there in the far flung areas of uttarakhand state so this traditional knowledge system and integration with the modern uh, science that is uh, very important if you want to solve any kind of environment little problem whether it is a climate change whether it is a pollution whether it is a biodiversity loss so it has the time has come that we have to give all the respect to this uh, traditional uh, societies because they have evolved with the nature so we can't ignore them if we really want to keep ourselves safe we have to really develop like chipko moment now chipko moment was the backbone of this entire thing that we are talking about now so, so if you have to restore your entire degraded forest ecosystem so this was all came out from the people who are living in those areas and who are experiencing the problem of uh, environmental degradation so that's very important come government in fact thank you so much thanks madam thanks a lot thank you so much so if uh, i think i have a meeting so can i leave the uh, this uh, because there was some phone call also coming from the vice chancellor so if uh, i can leave the meeting So, yes, yes, uh, ma'am. Thank you, yes, thank you for yes, delivering a nice and wonderful lecture, ma'am. Thank you, thank you very much. Ah, thank, uh, thank you, ma'am. Now we are forwarding to, for the technical sessions. Ah. Uh, Uh, now we have a uh, plenary session first and plenary session second so uh, we move forward up, forward to the plenary session first and uh, i request the, the plenary session first 
the chair uh, request the professor uh, dr vasan satpute sir principal late ramesh varputkar arts commerce and science college to chair the session and yes sir yes and uh, with the permission of the chair i i like to uh, give the brief about about the plenary session first i introduce uh, today's speaker professor dilip dilip jha sir professor dilip jha sir received his phd in aquaculture and aquatic resources from the asian institute of technology thailand and who and over 40 years of experience in teaching research and extension he is a professor of aquaculture and aquatic resources management in the department of aquaculture at the agriculture and the forest university rampur chitwan nepal throughout his career he has worked with a academic institution research and non governmental agencies working in nepal in 1982 he started his research on fishery resources of karnali river under the dolphin crocodile ecology project where he worked as a research scholar his project has played a key role in launching new project that support international collaboration jhas research focuses on the status and conservation of fish diversity of major river system in nepal earlier he has participated in research workshop on gender studies in agriculture held at wajingnar agriculture university netherland in 1991 he has successfully completed several national and international projects through different organizations he has published over 100 articles in national and international uh, journal as well as several books and laboratory manuals on aquaculture and fish health management also he was actively uh, in, involved in the aqua fish innovation lab project supported by you said through origin state university and university of michigan with the support of aqua fish innovation lab he has able to create awareness of human nutrition through a school pond education program also he successfully completed tenure as a director curriculum center at the agriculture and forestry university rampur chitwan he is mainly focusing on solving the challenges in the in the production of fin fish fish species as well as investigation and conservation of native fishes and creating awareness on nutrition also he was involved in you said pinni program in nepal through youth alliance for environment for short term consultants to train the participant and prepare uh, training material technical handbooks on integrated fish farming technical handbook on fish preservation and processing currently uh, professor dilip jha is a chairman of department of aquaculture i welcome on the on the hop of the three colleges in this the in this international conference on aquaculture for rural development i welcome the professor dilip jha uh, in this gathering and uh, and request <coughs> to give his remark about the aquaculture for rural development thank you sir Over thank you sir for uh, uh, introduction and uh, good morning everyone uh, honorable principals from different institutions uh, dr rajdhar j temkar dr basant d satpute dr biswas s khandre dr mohammad fazil and all the conveners and head of the department of geology dr patulal uh, chorpagar uh, dr santosh ran kham uh, dr tanvir pathan uh, dr sairi abdullah dr kusum 
or Professor Kusum or Natalam. And again, our Bhujam friends, Dr. Binay Chakravarti from Bangladesh Agriculture University. So it's really great for me. And above all, I am telling you, it's uh, uh, Professor Tanvir, who is uh, continuously encouraging to participate in such a prestigious event and uh, say something about the aquaculture for rural development in Nepal. Actually, you know, the Nepal, uh, especially it's a land-linked country. You know, I am going to say about the, just a background about Nepal, then what's the status of aquaculture and what's our role, the role of academician in the university, then what are the development domains and conclude conclusion. So just to think is many uh, and most of you have already visited our, uh, it's a small one, but beautiful country. So area, just see 147, one is a square kilometer. It's a completely landlocked country. There is no sea in Nepal. If you see the population, then just only is uh, 30 million. I think most of the states of India have the more population than Nepal. And if you talk about the elevation, then it's only lowest elevation in the Eastern part of Nepal. So 60 meter to is the top of the world, 8,848 point no, it's a recent 1.8 meter. <clears throat> so width, if you talk about the width, so it's a Bihar part of India, the from Raksol to, uh, to the northern part of Nepal is only the 193 kilometer in the width, while the length from east to west is only 885 kilometers. So, the physiography, if you see the physiography of Nepal, then it's only the Himalaya is the mostly, the most part of Nepal is see the 27%, then mid hills, the 50% and Tarai. Actually, I have included here the inner Tarai part also. Otherwise, is actual flat land area in Nepal, it's only the 23, 17% uh, only. The very less, the flat land area is uh, uh, only 17%. Otherwise, it's a mountainous one, you know. So even you people call mountainous country. And uh, we have the three major river systems in the eastern, uh, the eastern part of Nepal, the Kosi one, which is very devastating in the, you know, the Bihar state of India. Then again, in the central part, the Gandhi river system. And in the Western part of Nepal, uh, we called Karnali river. But in, Nep in India, it is called, while entered in India, it is called Ghagra river. And all these three major river systems drains the major river of India, the Ganges river system. So just to see the, uh, we have the natural uh, waters next to, uh, you know, the Brazil, but even until now, uh, we are not uh, just uh, utilizing all the water resources of our country, but there is a great potential uh, for utilization of the rivers and along with rivers, lakes, reservoirs, we have village ponds also and wetlands, marginal swamps and irrigated paddy fields. So if we divide the aquaculture under different agroecological zones in Nepal, then we have upper, the upper zone, the cold water, fisheries, 
which is uh, the commercial one, and middle cool water, semi-commercial, and lower flood plain, the commercial one. So these three zones are completely separated. If you say about the sacrophilic, mesophilic, and thermophilic type, and similar types. So just earlier, earlier it was, you know, is uh, after 90, you know, and then 80, after 80 generally is uh, um, the term aquaculture. Earlier is uh, the fisheries only. So capture fisheries, enhance fisheries and culture fisheries. It's very simple. How are we going to define one capture and enhance and culture fisheries, which we call fish culture or aquaculture. So capture fisheries, if you just put the formula control, if you have no control, then capture, no control. Anywhere you are going to, from anywhere, you are going to fish, fishing without any, you don't need any permissions. It goes under the capture one, enhance fisheries, is you have here only parcel control. You have to release the only stocking materials, means uh, hatchling, fry, fingerlings, just only. You don't need to care anything and feed the uh, fry fingerlings or the stocking material, nothing you have to do. <laughs> we have in most of the lakes uh, in Nepal and some reservoirs just uh, like enhanced fishery, or even you can say culture-based fishery, and is the aquaculture, where you can farm anything or you can raise anything, aquatic or any aquatic organism, even the plants, you know, any plants and animal you can raise here, uh, but it's our controlled condition. So, See, and it's uh, very recently, it's only, I think, uh, three months, about three months ago, the FAO completely separated the aquaculture and fisheries. Though it was earlier, it's, uh, you know, highly controlled his birth year, which, uh, what's the fisheries and what's the aquaculture or culture or fish culture like that. So it's clear cut now. So if we see the, a species number we have the Nepal. Uh, I have already told you very a small, beautiful landlocked country. Though we have, but total we have the fish species reported in 2019 is December 2019 is 252 species. Among these indigenous we have 236 and exotic 16 species under culture. We have carps. Carps are most, mostly cultured in Nepal, you know. It's a seven species of carps. And uh, we have indigenous and exotic one. And we have perch also under cultivations. It's a tilapia, exotic one. Though we have an abyss, the climbing perch, but uh, we have not uh, started yet. And in Bangladesh is uh, climbing perch is, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this under the farming. And catfish, we have two catfishes. The actually Pangasius, Pangasianodon, hypothalamus, and other catfish, though it's restricted, but uh, people are cultivating African catfish, the walking catfish, Clarius garipinus, not the indigenous, is exotic one. So these all fishes comes belongs to order 15 orders different orders. So see the orders composition, order 15 and family 40 and general 120. And these are the different families dominating by the species. Generally, you know, Cyprini form and Siluri form order is the dominating one. And these are the fish species, uh, mostly, you know, is uh, most of the species you are going to find in the uh, Indian subcontinent, even in Bangladesh, even in India and Nepal, we have these species. 
So see, these are the species. Uh, and uh, these species found in Nepalese yeah, uh, inland waters. So most of the uh, fishes comes under cyprin form order, family cyprinidae, then siluriforms, then pangas and African catfish, the perch. Under the perch, the sicily form orders, we have tilapia only. So see, the, we have Indian major carps, the Levioroita, then Mrigal, Srinas Mrigla, and uh, we call Bhakur or Katla, the Katla Katla. Yeah, then we have uh, Chinese carps also, the silver carp, hypophthalmic thismolytrix, big head carp uh, is uh, uh, new, name, name change, earlier aristichthys, now is the hypophthalmic thys nobilis, then again, grass carp, tinopharyngodonidella, and we have common carp also. You know, the Cyprinus carpio, we have two, two varieties of common carp. Actually, Cyprinus carpio variety is uh, communis, and other the uh, other the mirror carp, we have Cyprinus carpio variety specularis. Though need us also, but we don't have at present the leather carp. Then the striped catfish is uh, Pangasia nodon, hypophthalmus. <laughs> And uh, then African catfish, this one, this one, Nile tilapia, we have here. And uh, we are farming also. It's only one and a half year ago, only government of Nepal permitted to farm this fish under the restricted condition, you know, this tilapia, because they have issues if these fish is going to just invade the natural systems, then uh, problem face with the indigenous. And uh, uh, I have seen in the lakes of Pokhara Valley, the beautiful lake city in Nepal. And uh, um, this uh, piece also I have found from the Gandak river system just the last year. And we have rainbow trout also. This cold water, but it's exotic one, rainbow trout, and it's a cold water fishes, we're cultivating and exporting also to some extent. Then we have silver perch under the research centers only, Barbonimus goniodotus, and we have also taught our earlier just uh, presenter, uh, Professor Kusum already indicated it's a taught, so we have Tor putitora and tor tor. We have two species, and it's also the endangered fish in Nepal. So these are the species under the research centers, and researches are going on. In initial stage, little bit fast growth, otherwise it's a very slow growth, you know. So total fish production, though recent data changes even the 97. It's uh, some, it's uh, conflicting, you know. Our system is uh, Nep in Nepal is completely different, you know. We have 2022, but in Nepal, we have the years 2079. It's going on official. It's, it's, the, the 2022 is the year going, it's, it's not the official, you know, 2079 and uh, the month, is Baisak, we call, we don't call January, February, nothing. Though it's, uh, uh, see, it's uh, April, oh? April or it's uh, May now. It's, but we have here, you know, Baisak 24, you know, official Baisak, there is no official, it's uh, April, May, like nothing. So this is the production. So from aquaculture only, see the 17, 1700 is, uh, then fishery is, uh, capture fishery is stable, only 21,000 metric ton, you know, it's uh, stable, but fish farming in pond, it's going to incre uh, increasing. If we see the contribution in agriculture GDP is uh, around 4.2, 
while contribution in national GDP, uh, while I have seen in India also, it's not too much, uh, around uh, two, uh, we have uh, 1.2 only is, you know. So here also very less and per capita fish production is India more uh, um, over eight kg, but we have only uh, three, 3.2, around 3.2, you know. But uh, it's uh, some data is uh, 29, only, it's uh, 19 only. That's why I see the uh, culture and captures the position. So culture increasing. If you see the trend, so culture is a potential is aquaculture is increasing while the capture one is now. Earlier it was, you know, <laughs> the data indicates earlier, but it's now stable on the 21,000 only the metric tons of the audience we have. So just uh, if we see the potential, though we don't have, you know, see in Nepal, but globally, the alternative people are thinking about the alternative sheep food and uh, it's a global one. See, around 2000, um, it's uh, in between 2020 to 25. Mm -hmm. Then yep. again, uh, it's uh, 20, 2025 to 2030. Uh, alternative people are going to shift the uh, food and uh, economy going to be changed. And aquaculture is also going to be boom in the recent coming years. So if you say the Nepal, the, you know, it's, though it's mountainous country, mountainous country. So the flat land area, we have the pond aquaculture and is expanding rapidly. In the Tarai Belt of Nepal, the flat land, then waterlogged areas are converted to ponds also. See, in the Midlands area, so see, in the Midlands area of Nepal also. In peoples are encouraging to uh, establish in the, uh, the dugout ponds like that. Then see the is uh, hilly area. It's a cold water one where the STP slope in, in the STP slope of the uh, area the on the ponds and the farm is a cold water species. You know rainbow trout. So trout farming in the hilly areas of Nepal. Again, just seeing. So species diversification is tilapia, pangasius, clarius farming going on. And uh, it's a hapariary. It's uh, for the juvenile, it's for juvenile is good. And uh, if you see the species, then what is the pangas, you know, the 400 metric tons or even uh, seven is in some differences, the 700 metric tons and Vietnam is the leading one uh, for the pangasius production in the world. So just to see in Nepal, just starting very less. So our most culture, you know, culture species under the you know, carbs and see the species selection. You, you know, silver carp is the most fastest growing fish species due to this phytoplankton feeder and growth is good, but it's uh, face low price. You know, if bigger, more than uh, one or two kg, then it's uh, going to face price, otherwise it's less than rohu. See the rohu. The Lebio Rohita is a great market and fetch high market price for culturally in the some of the um, in the ethnic groups in Nepal when a wedding ceremony they need this one Rohu and it's famous for you know Lebio Rohita is famous for its taste not only for its taste it poses more uh, glyco, 
uh, glycophosphate especially. Uh, so this one the uh, essential for memory power also. Then Mrigal, we call nanny hair, then uh, see the common card, then grass card, then big head card, and other cards. Then uh, is uh, you know uh, people feel some difficulties in uh, breeding cutla baku, but it's also the fastest growing fields. This cutla uh, cutla. So this one, then next the feed and if you see the traditional feeding like that, then traditional feed is a combination of you know. Is a rice bran and mustard oil cube. So most of the farmers now use, you know, even 84% farmers use, you know, it's a self-made uh, pellet fish and only 16% they using the, you know, pellet. So it's a traditional type of feeding system. So then again, expanding. The marketing of any enterprise is very, very essential. If you are not going to market for any enterprise, then it's really difficult. So life is sales and marketing has increased even Kathmandu, the colder one, but uh, they anyway, they are managing to sell life is So huge marketing and uh, peoples are growing fishes and to maintain dissolved oxygen they are trying to just place the water in ponds and some uh, persons are using aerators also so what are the challenges actually the challenges in uh, challenges to aquaculture is actually the seed quality you know Seed is the very important factor. The good quality of seed, it's uh, determined the growth of feces pro production. Then a species diversity, even though we have a species, we have other indigenous species, but we are completely concentrated on carp, you know, the indigenous carp, three species and four species of exotic carp, then feed and food conversion ratio is very essential. Then waste disposal, then quality production, then balanced supply and urban aquaculture. We are noticing in some areas of Nepal, the peoples are interested to start some aquaponics and other aquaculture, uh, urban aquacultures and biosecurity and food safety, it is also very, very essential one. So just to see for seed survival, I am going to give message is survival is very less. So if anyone going to start the hapa rearing, then it is really, it promises you the good one, the, that the, is a survival. It's really great, the hapa rearing. Please try. Otherwise, general people growing, it's less. And uh, I have conducted one trial to rear fishes with probiotic, different types of probiotics, in which stage it's really works or it doesn't work. So even in, you know, it's aquaculture by Elsevier, it's a paper. So just think uh, it's, uh, you know, hapa rearing is also good. And to some extent, our, uh, you know, the, in the hatchling estate, to some in the hatchling estate, probiotic, all probiotics work well, while some probiotics only work in the fry estate, and the developmental stage, but after finger links, there is no need of any, no? So this is the finding of my research. So just see, if we talk about the university, because we all are academician and we are working in the university, 
uh, earlier, you know, I worked in the Truman University, but place and other things same. And uh, one technical university, this is the only technical university established in Nepal, the Agriculture and Forestry University in 2010. And this is the only university in Nepal which uh, we cater four years BSc fisheries program. In India, we, uh, uh, you have the uh, Bachelor in Fisheries, BFSC, it's a four years. And uh, see our fisheries program building is actually new programs. And we are going to just enroll each year only 15 to 20 students. And we have also the Master of Science in Aquaculture and we have PhD program. But until now, only two PhD graduated and others are on the path. Actually, in the university, just uh, think for the university, you know, uh, we have four years uh, BSc physics program. I am already telling this is the pawns of the university. This one, then the role of the university. To see, until and unless the works of the university do not bring about any change in the life of whom those works are intended for, they do not have any meaning, you know? If we are not going to make any societal change, then what is the meaning of university? Nothing. And our university is, this is the only university which cater technical. So this is a technical university. We have forestry also, we have veterinary science also, and we have agriculture and the fisheries also. So what is the role played by our university for the societal change? See, the, the actually development domains, knowledge, attitudes, skills, and agency policy and applications. So just think here. See, the, these are the developmental is the domains. So how we are going to mix with society to the academician, other institutions, then again, just think the, the rural farm, farmers. So just think, so benefits, for the target stakeholders is a better understanding of what the development has to offer to them. To the, actually it's the society one, then income generation and hence improved livelihood, just see. And these events ultimately leading to, to social improvements. So it's our role, academicians role. And for that, we have developed one program, the awareness on nutrition through school pond education. You know, the government schools, we have private education center also under the government schools, you know. So here we have a started program. We support the schools. Actually, just may I continue because my time already 11 to 12, but I started very late, you know. So may I continue or not? It's time already gone, 12. Yes, yes, yes. you can continue, sir. For if you provide uh, 15 to 20 minutes, then I'm going to finish. Yeah, uh, within a 15 minutes, you can, sir. You can. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you see, your time is very important. And yeah, the yeah. one already coming to meet me from uh, yeah, 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 foreigners. So time is very important. I have given I said 12 just to see the situation. So awareness on nutrition through. So you can manage. You you have to develop project. You have GST, DBT, many more things. 
So this is a very simple way, but we have to take the challenge, you know, because it's, uh, our system in school is only 10, 10 plus two, then only the university from bachelor. So see, it's uh, school children, eight, nine, and 10. And uh, we supported uh, in different locations to the end, giving training to the school, two school, in each school, two school teachers and the students. And students, they know how to farm the fees and how they grow. And also we provide uh, some equipments uh, to measure the dissolved oxygen, then turbidity, then pH, see the, this is, see the principle, see the principle of one school. And we have uh, given the equipments, uh, then see the, is the ponds of the school. And uh, they told me that it's, uh, see, the, see the language, it's most, it's uh, like in India. The alphabet, you, if you see in Nepal, same, same, the most, you know. So see the school students in many schools we have. See, within, see, within six to eight months, they grow this fees and students say, oh, this is the way educating. See, our university, it's our university program how to go in the society like that, this one, see. See the, all the all, all cards and principal happy with <laughs> this piece, see. The principals, then again, see the schools yeah, in, in, under this uh, different location. Even I, I'm uh, just trained, uh, training, giving lecture, but I also give the lecture to the uh, students, but it's a different language, you know, it's a Nepalese language. So like that, see the net and other things and our uh, the program coordinator just going to train how to handle the equipment and see the principal. This principal from other schools, very happy to see this device sechi disk to measure plankton turbidity. See, huh? and he told me he's going to make, going to make uh, the, uh, by his own, it's a very simple way. So just he's trying to, that it works or not. See the principle trying <laughs> the plankton turbidity. See the changes, you know. So it's very, again, another school. Then we have given training to the all students, you know, all students, uh, parents, especially mother, to know and also support how they are going to farm the fees and what are the importance of fees. Why do we eat fees, you know, in Nepal, People's like uh, what you call the rice, you know, people's like rice. And rice is the energy source, carbohydrate. When rice is supplemented with, rice is supplemented with fish, though I have uh, attended most of the, and when uh, scientists presented paper from the Bangladesh, they started, the one thing they start their present, uh, presentation with Macher, Bhater, Bengali. <laughs> Even in America, <laughs> the, the Bangladeshi, the scientists while presenting, they start. So see, in Nepal, uh, what is the, we just supplement the food and train to the, see the children's parents, especially the mother. See, see here the social, how uh, it is going to change the societal changes in the, and by this, see the one encouraging result, see the lady from USIT, from Oregon State University, and uh, just this one from Jim Dyna from, you know, is Hilary Igna uh, from uh, Oregon State University, it's Jim Dyna from University of Michigan, 
and it's a USID supported project through our university to the schools. So see, one of the students studying in class nine, uh, they just dug out phones. See the changes, changes while, while going to give the training, you know. So it's, so we don't think that you are going to uh, launch the program in school, no. If you are going to make societal change, then see the, our next project. See the area of this photograph, this one, the STP area. This is the photograph of the Bajang. It's a very, you know, it's near the China border. China border, and there is a river called Seti River, and see the peoples. Peoples using even dynamiting, even electric fishing and others, then they use other discriminating, you know. For conservation of peace, we started. No one knows. In this area, we are going to farm the fishes. It's a little bit colder one, you know. So just see, we have searched the lands, see the stones, you know, search the lands. Is, is really, uh, we are going to dug the ponds in such area, then we give the training to the, see the farmers. See, how to test the soil, good soil, which hold the water. See, which hold the water, see the, this type of training, then this is the, see, one farmer again, but supported by, you know, you fund supported by our university, you know, then only other, <laughs> you know, uh, then they are interested to grow, then integrated fish farming, see the vegetables, see the different types of ponds, then again training to them, this is another, is other type of, program. It's not the school pond program. It's a different one to uh, in the interior. It's a, most of the interior parts of Nepal. So even you can form the project, but you have to visit if you have time, you know, then you have to manage uh, during the vacation. Otherwise, it's very difficult to manage time to just give the training and support such activity. So just to see, people uh, is mostly huge, gill net, you know, this type of net. So changing, we have changed the people, please protect, conserve the fishes and support with this program, integrated fish farming. See, this, they are happy. The fisher, fisher community, they are happy, see, by taking this one, the, then again, how we are going to value it, then we have given training to farmers, the boneless, you know, is a spine. A spine is very, is really very difficult. Uh, so that's why how to going to make feeling, feeling. So this is the uh, farmers, is the program coordinator one here, the train, this one is the farmer again, the, 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 see. They make and very happy with fish filling. There is no spine there. See, even in the cars, no spine. It's unique and very simple techniques to make fillet by your own. Very simple. See. So what the way forward? What what we have to do? So economic development is essential to combat malnutrition, especially in children, women and general awareness of nutrition, so value of local crops for health, we have to say, if you see, if you visit western part of Nepal, so western part of Nepal is a mountainous area, they have food deficit, you know, other, other crop, but they only know the rice is the only food, you know, bread, they don't, Say the bread is the food. See, see the mindset system. So that's why we have to again just uh, 
how we are going to fertilize other you know other food commodities to for the healthy one so this one is very very important and so just to think of the concluding remarks so the, the number of indigenous fish species are of high economic academic and decorative value and research based strategies on fish fauna need to be encouraged though we have several endemic species but uh, we are not just uh, going to start what the um, aquaculture status of so, such a species the neglige aquaculture is the fastest growing sub sector under agriculture and but you know even covid cases again is increasing in nepal you know in india also then covid 19 has huge impact on this sub sector and ultimately the economic condition of fish growers seed and feed supply interrupted so little attention given despite important role of natural grown food on so just to think no no i am going to finish very soon please just wait only for 2 minutes the concept of the economic development in recent years for the comprehensive and sustainable management natural water resources is gaining popularity in our country you know popularity so one of its fundamental principles is a holistic approach to all sectors of activity preserving the quality of ecosystem goods and services in the long term so fisheries and aquaculture see side by side capture one capture one the fisheries or even your culture based fisheries and aquaculture are a crucial sector recently both in terms of employment and contribution to national economies and food security we have to promote the sector widely for sustainable development if we are going to make any societal change then really you are great academician if you think like that i think so so thanks everyone and i am really grateful to really is uh, tanvi dr tanvi pathan for providing me an opportunity to say something what is going on uh, in the academia especially in a, in our university for societal and rural development thanks everyone for your endurance thanks if any thanks. query uh, i welcome to you for your questions yes two three short questions because uh, i have to meet you the foreign delegates you know i have given time 12 okay thank you professor uh, jha sir for your yeah, wonderful, yes, wonderful lecture uh i would like to uh, if any questions uh, please ask audience if any questions related to this please ask if any question they will put in the chat box so you just yeah, uh, yeah, continue yeah. with program and we we have to continue and i am going to answer uh, letter just yes, uh, yes, thank you thank you the i need only i need only 5 minutes break to just is foreign delegates already here so just uh, yes, yes yes you can take a break please, sir. thank you any, thank you any questions any short question any 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 query no 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 okay. any query no no is uh, i am telling you how we are going to change ourselves you know is a challenging job for the university professors this is really very challenging <laughs> really very okay thanks thanks everyone thank you thank you, thank you. okay I, i welcome the today's session chairperson uh, dr vasan satputi sir principal late ramesh varpurkar arts commerce and science college sonpet to give the session remark okay thank you atul am i audible yes 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 sir yes sir yeah uh, being one of the chief organizing secretary of this uh, joint venture i welcome all the resource persons for accepting our invitation and uh, helping us to make this event as a international one uh, we have two resource persons from abroad 
and more than 10 <coughs> participants from abroad, which contributes to make this conference as international one. Uh, again, I would like to aware the participants that uh, we are trying to concretize the very concept of cluster colleges, uh, where the members of the clusters use the resources of each other for and form a type of alliance. Uh, uh, since last two events, we are doing the same one. Uh, the same is being expected in education uh, policy 2020 also. Uh, Atul, I would like to uh, say you that uh, in recent past, uh, we undertook one uh, international uh, conference in collaboration with uh, Nilanga College, uh, where Honorable Vice Chancellor Dr. Uddo Bhosle, uh, sir, uh, praised such joint venture in academic activities. And therefore, uh, I again congratulate all the coordinators and my colleague principals, those who are involved in this activity, uh, to organize such venture. Uh, the real inspiration, no doubt, uh, behind organizing organizing such events is, of course, the uh, patrons of these uh, institutes like uh, Honorable Parmesh Rauji Kadam Sahib, then uh, Appa Sahib Rajre Kaka, uh, Honorable uh, Jayadat Tanna Sirsagar Sir and uh, uh, Mrs. Khan Sahib Begum, uh, who supported us from uh, time to time. Of course, coming back to the session uh, remarks, uh, okay, let me tell you frankly that I am not the expertise in this field to pass any comments on the session. But as a session chair, uh, I must say uh, that the talk and the presentation given by Mr. Dilip Kumar Jha, uh, certainly it has been very enlightening one. And in a very lucid and a simple way, uh, he tried to convince the participants. Of course, uh, uh, for some time we were not in India, but in, we were in Nepal, uh, where uh, he took all of us, uh, where the land linked country uh, Nepal is just concerned. He referred certain uh, names of the rivers, the major river system that is of the uh, in Nepal, that is the Ghagra. Uh, then we have uh, the participants are being introduced with the Nepal aquaculture. Uh, we understand that uh, near about 225 species are there of the fishes. Uh, certain pond aquaculture again is uh, rapidly uh, growing there itself. Uh, Dr. Dilip Kumar Jha also referred to one type of fish that is Rahu, uh, which is being uh, a very tasty and being used in the wedding ceremony, etc. in Nepal. Uh, again, some challenges also are there before the aquaculture in Nepal. Uh, he also referred to that only one university is there in Nepal that caters the four-year uh, fishery program, uh, etc. I just concerned and certain examples of various schools uh, where aquaculture uh, is being introduced. Uh, such and uh, many other things are being introduced by this man. Uh, he is in hurry. He has to meet certain foreign uh, persons uh, who are waiting for him. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Atul, for providing me an opportunity to chair this session. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind support. Yeah, thank uh, you, sir. I uh, invite you all to visit Nepal. Yeah, definitely, sir. Definitely, definitely. Sir. definitely, definitely sir. You will see your eastern part, southern part, and western part already uh, meet the Very borders. Close. <coughs> Very close to Take Nepal. Rahu Forest Reserve. Uh, Dr. Yeah, Chakra, yeah. Dr. Chakravarti is speaking to Jha, sir. sir. He, just... uh, he, yeah. is, he is my close friend. So, uh, he never invited me to visit Nepal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now he will invite you, sir. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and keep Rahu in the reserve position. Yes, I once, I once again thank you, thank you, Professor Dilip Zha, uh, for yeah. such a nice uh, lecture on agriculture for rural development in Nepal. And also, I am thankful to uh, session chairperson, Dr. Vasan Satpude, sir, to chair this session and give the session remark. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank I, you. I, yes, I forward to next plenary session. That is the plenary session second. And in this session, firstly, I request Dr. Uh, Vishwas Khandari, sir, Principal Kalika Devi Arts, Commerce and Science College to chair the session. Principal Vishwas Kandari, sir. In this, uh, yes, sir. Uh, with the permission of the chair, uh, in this session, we have the great academician, Dr. Vinay Kumar Chakrabarti, 
from Bangladesh. Uh, we talk on the role of agriculture for rural development in the Bangladesh. I introduce Professor uh, Binay Kumar Chakravarti sir. Dr. Binay Kumar Chakravarti, uh, Chakravarti sir. Okay, sir. Yeah, uh, Binay Kumar Chakravarti sir, a uh, fisheries yeah. scientist and consultants has played an important key role as a researcher and extension worker in the field of aquaculture and fisheries management in the Bangladesh, especially in aquaculture uh, field of mud eel and the mud crab, shrimp and the sea bass, uh, livelihood, climbing resilient, sustainable management and conservation of wetland resources uh, and biodiversity wetland. He has discovered and developed the technologies of a mud crab, uh, jewel eye. He has discovered control natural breeding of eel, nursery and culture management of eel. Uh, he, he firstly successfully established the mid-level fisheries manpower fisheries diploma institute, institution in Chanpur, Bangladesh and introduced a uh, course curriculum in the Bangladesh Technical Education Board under the, under the project Fishery Diploma Course Implementation Project. He has a vast knowledge of project design, implementation and execution of participatory action research. He has also good management, communication, analyc analytical and reporting skills and knowledge on extension motivational motivation and uh, rehabilitation of the fishers of coastal area and other target disaster people. He has also capacity to communicate and build up awareness relation with GBO, NGO, government officials, NGO and allied person on the society. He is also life member of 15 national and international societies organization about 18 books, six book chapters, more than 64 abstract and 66 scientific papers and other 38 articles are published by national and international public publisher and organization. He is also a life member. Uh, he is also acting as a reviewer uh, more than 20 different international journal and he is also editorial board member of international journal of oceanography and aquaculture asian mm -hmm. biological research foundation and international mm -hmm. journal of advanced academic study mm -hmm. he awarded mm -hmm. lifetime achieve uh, lifetime award achievement in 2021 by society of biological sciences and rural development Life, lifetime achievement award by global research Initiative for Sustainable Agriculture and Allied Sciences for Outstanding Contribution of Fisheries Sector on the occasion of International Web Conference on Global Research Initiative for Sustainable Agriculture and Allied Sciences. World Environment and Livelihood Award in 2021 by International Foundation for Environment and Ecology on Aqua Environment on the occasion of seven International Conference of Environment and Ecology uh, India. Doc he also received Dr. APG Abdul Kalam Green Environment uh, Promotion Award 2021 uh, for commendable contribution in the field of environmental protection and social awareness, India. Lifetime Award Achievement in 2020 for commendable uh, contribution in the field of science, society, and environment in uh, second international conference on environmental and, so uh, and society. He also received the scientist of the year uh, in 2018 for outstanding contribution of fish biology on the behalf of International Academy of Science and Research India and guest of honor from different organization and fellow awards from Calcutta University and Bidan Chandra Krishi Vishwavidyalay and other organization. So this is all about brief about the professor Binay Kumar Chakravarti sir. Now I request Binay Kumar Chakravarti sir to put your uh, remark on this occasion. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, what is happening about? Now you can share your screen, sir. 
Oke. Okay. host uh, disable participant screen sharing. You can you can yeah. share. You can share because you are, we made you as a co-host. Yes. Host. Here it is written host disable participant screen sharing. Uh, no, sir, you are, you, are, you are a host now. You can share this. Atul, you just make uh, any... Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. I already make it, sir. Thank you, sir. Now you are visible, Professor. Yeah. Yeah. What is the problem? Something wrong. What happened? PPT is different. Yes. What is happening? Uh, is it not moving, sir? No, no, no. Uh, there is a problem. Okay. Is it uh, is it a PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, then. I want to start. Yes, sir. You can start, sir. You are What's the problem? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have to what? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. But uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. You are visible. Your screen is visible. But uh, is it a problem? Slide show. One there again. Yes. Is it visible, sir? Yeah, yeah. It is visible. Yes, sir. Now. You can start your presentation. <coughs> okay. Okay. Uh, honorable, <laughs> now I want yes. to start my presentation. Yes, yes, yes. You, can, you, can, you can start your presentation. Please, all the participants, mute their mic. Okay. Uh, I, I want to start my presentation. Honorable. Uh, honorable um, uh, chairperson um, that is uh, principal uh, kalika devi arts commerce and science college uh, um, that is dr vishwas eskandari and uh, uh, convener dr otul uh, uh, otul or uh, Ch chopagar and um, uh, dr uh, tanvir patan convener and others, um, and others, um, um, uh, yeah, person. And um, uh, yeah, thank you to all. And um, um, now it is good afternoon, maybe, maybe good afternoon in my country. I want to start my presentation. Uh, that is uh, the rule of aquaculture for rural development in Bangladesh. Before, before starting my presentation. The problem is that here is a okay. Here I want to say this is Bangladesh. Uh, I am from speaking uh, this area. Uh, if you uh, see my cursor, actually, before starting my uh, presentation, I want to give an idea about the country geographical scenario of Bangladesh. Bangladesh is uh, fully bounded by India, except Southeast is uh, Myanmar and uh, Bay of Bengal on the south. Area of the country, 1,47,570 square kilometer. Population is uh, um, huge population in this small country that is 162.18 million. And growth rate is 1.2 per annum. And sex ratio is 1.2 is to 1. 
and important rivers here that is brahmaputra uh, tista podda magna this is jamuna and here is karnaphuli there are six season in the in the year and uh, winter summer and monsoon are prominent winter begins november and ends in february maximum temperature recorded in summer 41 degree centigrade and monsoon started in uh, july and stay up to october <clears throat> now i want to say about the contribution of fishery sector fishery sector playing a very significant role which contribute 3.52% to the national gdp 26.37% to the agricultural gdp 1.35% to the um, to total export earning it is a very important issue uh, for uh, export earning fish alone supply a per capita fish consumption that is 62.58 gram per day in our daily uh, daily dietary uh, requirement about 12% of the total population of the country is engaged in full or part time basis for their livelihood um the state of world fisheries and uh, aquaculture now 2018 bangladesh land uh, bangladesh is third in uh, inland open water cap uh, capture production and fifth in uh, world aquaculture production that is uh, fao report here i want to say uh, there is a problem mute uh, here i want to say the different types of capture fisheries in bangladesh what type of capture fisheries that is river and estuary sundarban mangrove area bill kaptai lake and wetland here uh, the in case of uh, river what is happening 0.32 million metric ton production and 0.021 uh, million metric ton production and bill only uh, here i want to say next slide in case of close water um, water bodies culture what is happening there is a uh, uh, water bodies are pond seasonal culture water body that is bower uh, shrimp and prawn farm crab pen culture case culture and uh, marine water resources the um, uh, coastline is 710 kilometer and the production of marine 0.671 million metric ton total production of bangladesh is for was 4.5034 uh, million metric ton that is the uh, production of last year now i want to say uh, the ngs in fish biodiversity of bangladesh freshwater fish species is 260 freshwater stream species 24 exotic fish species culture now 12 marine fish species 740 and marine stream species 36 tortoise is 22 crab species is 12 now i want to say this is the burning issue i want to say near about 1.80 core people uh, that is 12 percent people are anyhow engaged with um, uh, with uh, the fisheries sector here uh, shrimp and fish farmer 22 percent farm technician or consultant seven percent and feed and uh, healthcare equipment is, uh, is not sold of uh, is um how many percent who are hatcheries uh, owners are uh, 17 percent model and crab harvester eight percent seafood retailer ten percent processor nine percent and others four percent this is ten percent here is the total scenario of the production what is the production here is a crucial scenario the 1983-84 the production was 0.754 only uh, metric ton only and last year the production was 4.621 million metric ton it's a very burning issue i think uh, we are in um, developing um, the aquaculture practice in bangladesh the regression type is poly polynomial here i want to discuss about the contribution of inland capture fisheries total fish production that is what is happening in case of capture that is uh, uh, open water fisheries uh, the production was 1983 only 
0.4716 million uh, metric ton and last year the uh, production was 1.30124 million metric ton and what is happening in case of capture fisheries uh, it is a burning issue uh, for the discussion here the production in 1983-84, the percentage of uh, capture fisheries production was 62.59, and 2007-8, it was 41.36 percent. And last, uh, that is 2020-21, uh, was 27.72 percent. And here the uh, contribution of the um, scenario of the river and estuary production. Here, yeah, this is the. Um, bar diagram, what is happening 1983-84, it is uh, the production was like um, 0.2 uh, million metric ton up and this is decrease, decrease and up, uh, increase, increase, increase. Again, it is increasing day by day. But uh, in case of uh, Sundarban, here it is also the scenario, uh, the production was lower and it is increasing and uh, uh, it reached up to this point and uh, the um, statistical analysis is uh, this is a polynomial regression type. And uh, in case of bill fisheries, what is happening? It is also like this. Uh, the production is increasing in bill fishery. This is open water. Um, it is, um, uh, however, our, this is called bill fisheries. The uh, production is increasing. And in case of Kaptai Lake, uh, also the production increasing. It is managed by BFRI, Bangladesh Fisheries Research Institute. Here, uh, uh, Kaptai Lake is situated, situated in uh, very close to Agartala, Mizoram, yeah, in uh, India, close to India. And flat plain uh, production is like this. Uh, it is uh, regression type is polynomial, and the production was you know, once upon a time like 1983-84. Uh, the uh, near about 0.2 million metric, metric ton, and it is increased now, uh, near about uh, 0.8 million metric ton. In case of inland culture total fisheries, what is happening? It is included, I told you, uh, it, it is included corn, uh, and um, uh, that is uh, our uh, other um, seasonal water body like this. What is happening? Uh, the production was 1983-84, the production was 0 0.11703 million metric ton, and it is increased, the marvelous increase, that is 2.63875 metric, million metric ton. This is the scenario. A positive contribution of inland culture fisheries uh, production. What is happening in that case? In that case, 1983-84, the culture production was only 15.53 million metric ton, in 2007-8, the production was 39.23 million metric ton. And, and la, sorry, last year, the production was 57.43 million metric ton. It is a marvelous uh, increasing in uh, pond, uh, 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 not only pen, pond, uh, that is um, close water bodies production is increasing uh, directly. What is happening in, um, sorry, what is uh, in case of uh, pond? This is increasing. This is increasing rapidly, and the statistical analysis polynomial and the seasonal culture water body. What is happening? It is also increasing the production. And in case of bower, the it is another type of water body. It is the production is uh, um, increasing. In case of stream and prone, this is coastal belt area. Uh, the production um, was. Um, uh, in 1983-84, the production was lower. It is increasing um, just uh, 0.3 million metric ton um, uh, in position now. And regression type is logarithmic. Uh, this is the position. Here is the position of, sorry, uh, Madil. That is uh, Monotrus kuchia, eel fish. The production is what is happening. The culture technique of this production is not practiced till now. I introduced in Bangladesh the culture of Madil in Bangladesh, but the actually it is collected from uh, natural directly. The production is decreasing like this. Uh, the regression type is linear. Uh, this is the situation. What is happening? Mud crab, mud crab position is it is uh, uh, that that is um, um, incre increasing, decreasing. 
uh, decreasing and increasing. This is the position. Uh, this is uh, due to, uh, I think, the COVID-19. Uh, this is also COVID-19. Um, and in case of pan culture, what is happening? In case of pan culture, this is the position. Uh, the uh, um, um, uh, increasing, decreasing. This is the position in case of pen culture. Case culture, it is uh, populated and increasing the production uh, system of Bangladesh. Now, I want to discuss an important species that is Pangasia uh, species, uh, um, uh, Hypothermus molectris. Uh, uh, yeah, this is called uh, by Dr. <coughs> Professor um, uh, Dilip Jha. Uh, uh, the, um, these um, Pangasia species introduced in Nepal, and they are uh, suffering from mass production of uh, pangas. But in our country, we are producing um, uh, we are producing uh, 80 to 70 um, metric ton per hectare. It's a, um, a very remar remarkable. And exotic species, as a exotic species of uh, as a pangas, is contributed. 23.24 percent of total production. It's a very remarkable. In case of tilapia, what is happening? It is also contribution um, is 16.64 percent of total production. This the scenario of the production. Uh, this is due to last year Corona virus that is uh, um, COVID-19. In case of pangas, uh, it is happening uh, so. Now another question is coming. Uh, what is happening in case of these two species? The food ingredients, the food value is increasing day by day. The uh, um, cost uh, value is increasing, but marketing uh, is poor. Um, the uh, decreasing the um, decrease uh, decreasing the uh, marketing rate of these two species. Here is uh, I am uh, I want to discuss about the. Contribution marine uh, total fish production. What is happening in 1983-84? The production was 0.16488 uh, uh, million metric ton, and last year the production was 0.68124 million metric ton. What is uh, happening in case of um, uh, marine fish? It is also decreasing. For, um, decreasing. This is the um, uh, bar diagram. Uh, this is the this is trend last year. Uh, it is come 14.09 percent, and 1983-84 it was. 21.88 million metric ton. And now uh, industrial trolling, uh, industrial trolling uh, in case of, uh, this is the cap capture fisheries, that is cash storage, this is not product. Uh, can, uh, this, what is happening? The, 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 there is a car, uh, it is um, uh, upgrading and uh, uh, here is the point, the last year, the um, um, cash storage was higher. And in case of, uh, uh, artisanal uh, total catch, it is also the um, production uh, is increasing. That is, catch is uh, showing the uh, um, collecting fish is um, um, increasing. Now, I want to discuss the natural spawn in riverine system. What is happening in riverine system due to, uh, due to uh, ecological change and um, um, uh, climate change? Um, and um, there are so many reasons. Um, of man-made, um, the natural spawn of different rivers. Um, here is, uh, this is this is the uh, scenario of the um, 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 natural spawn. It is um, upgrading, um, decreasing like this. But in case of artificial spawn spawning, artificial spawning, it is increasing day by day. Nowadays, I think no need more production of um, artificial spawn, uh, especially car spawn. Now, here is marine aquaculture. Marine develops streams, uh, pineus monodon and pineus indicus. Culture is medium to high saline water and prone, that is Macrocian rosenbergi. Culture is less saline uh, water areas. Production of mangrove crabs and brackish and marine water fish species like sebas and mullers are uh, produced by uh, as a by crop or fellow crop in the stream prawns. And about uh, 1,093 aquatic marine organisms, including pinfish, uh, shellfish, shrimp, sea water, etc., are uh, recorded in the uh, Bay of Bengal. Marine capture fish has been declining about 5% yearly. It is very uh, sad news for us. Among the marine fishes, only streams are culture in one side, uh, one, side, one um, shore ponds. 
Now I want to say socio eco friendly technology applied to enhance the production and biodiversity. What is happening in case of aquaculture? Uh, we are practicing um, for um, uh, this type of aquaculture. There is a culture method. What is extensive? Extensive the production is only 1.5 million metric metric ton per hectare. Uh, semi intensive 1.5 to 4 uh, metric ton. Intensive 4.2 uh, 10 metric ton. Highly intensive 10 uh, metric ton to higher. Aquaculture. What what is the um, um, what is what process is ongoing in Bangladesh? Car polyculture, small scale polyculture, catfish polyculture, monoculture. There is koi, pangas, thai, solputi, tilapia, etc. Case culture, pedic, um, fish culture, pan culture, integrated fish farming. Uh, this is the aquaculture. And the native fish are Katla, Katla, uh, Lebio Ruita, Kirhana, Megala, Lebio Kalvasu, and uh, Lebio Gonia, and Puntia Sarana, and Lebio Bata. This is the native fish, and this is the exotic fish. This is culturing Thai pangas, this is Pangasia Suchi, um, yeah, Big Head, Silver Carb, Grass Carb, Black Carb, Common Carb, Thai Solpuri, and Tilapia. And now I want to say diversify the indigenous fish culture. That is Ompok Pagda. It is culturing, it is induced breeding and um, uh, produce uh, seedling and culturing. And in case of Mr. Scabias Gulsa, it is also um, uh, it is also um, uh, breeding, um, artificial breeding, produce seedling and culturing. And Master Tenga, Tengra, it is also culturing and um, um, producing um, seedling and um, 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 artificial breeding. And heteroponous socialist, that is the string fish in case of uh, same same thing. And Clarias batracas, this is magur, it is also, it is native magur, not African catfish. Another uh, statue is koi, climbing parts, it is um, not a native fish, it is um, um, uh, higher from Thailand and Vietnam. Uh, it is um, um, culturing, uh, breeding, and nursing. Chana Stratiotas, it is a Vietnamese shoal, that is uh, uh, striped snake uh, head fish. Chana Stratiotas, it is already practicing in my country. And I'm on a mola, it is our native fish, it is practicing. Now it is induced breed, uh, um, uh, induced breeding, and nursing, uh, seed pro producing, and culturing. And, and, and it is a very remarkable fish in our country. You know that this is a very important fish. It is the medicine of um, um, eye disease. Eye disease, that is a resource of vitamin A. Katla, uh, not a plus, chitola, chitol mass. It is also uh, producing um, um, fry and fingerlings and culturing also. And culture of Pangas and Pangas and Hypernas and um, um, culture of um, Telapia, uh, I, I discussed it before. This is very uh, two important fish species. It is the fish of poor people of Bangladesh. The poor people um, purchase it and eat, uh, eat them. But I want to say the quality of the flesh of the fish is uh, equal to other native fish. There is no undoubtedly saying. So the poor fish uh, accept it, but the rich people does not like it. Integrated fish farming. Integrated fish farming practice is one of the most important ecological balance sustainable technologies in the not only Bangladesh in the world. The technology involves a combination of fish polyculture integrated with fee crop or livestock production and integrated fish farming is highly advan uh, advantageous uh, to uh, improve the economy of production and decrease the adverse environmental impact of farming. What is happening in that case? Uh, Agri-based fish farming, that is fedicum fish culture, is practicing in my country. This farming is practiced in the fedi field, where the fedi fields retain water from three to eight months in a year. This practice has declined in a recent year due to the use of pesticide uh, to protect high yielding varieties of fedi field. Uh, it is a, a burning issue. <laughs> But it is in uh, but in particular area of the country, uh, it is not. Um, um, uh, decreasing, it is uh, al already increasing. Types of practice, permanent type, fedi grows in middle, middle of the fedi, uh, here is the um, uh, canal. Rice field grows, serve as feed, nurseries to grow, fry to into fringling also. And in case of, in case of agri-based fish farming, that is central pond type, uh, fedi growing area in the peri perimeter, here is the uh, scenario of the uh, fish, um, 
um, forming and lateral trans system here is the lateral trans system and in that case yeah, Indian major crab, chana species, um, uh, that is tilapia, quadrias butter crab, koi, uh, silver carp, um, uh, uh, like the, the fishes are cultured in Fedicum fish culturing. Horticulture come fish farming. What is happening there? Horticulture come fish farming system includes the culture of fruits, vegetables, and flowers on the embankment of the pond. Here is the uh, scenario. And fruits and vegetable contains various nutritive elements and research has recommended 85 grams of fruits and 300 grams of vegetables to consume daily for a person uh, but this is the resource of uh, horticulture come fish farming livestock fish uh, livestock fish farming what is happening poultry come fish farming this system utilizes poultry dropping <coughs> of fully built up poultry litter for fish culture and this fish production obtained is about um, 5,000 uh, kg per hectare per year with 1,250 kg chicken meat and uh, um, uh, 70,000 number of eggs, approximately uh, 500 to 600 number, of, uh, per, uh, number per hectare. A bird is reared. And the poultry bird layers are feed with uh, strata, grower, and broader feed according to the age. It is um, ready feed, which is produced from the um, different industries. In Bangladesh, this type of fish farming is totally banned because, because for <coughs> safety of uh, human, human being, um, uh, this is banned in Bangladesh. Duck come fish culture, what is happening? The duck come commonly called a biological aerator. They are reared on the dike of the pond in a low cost house. And this farming is practiced in Haur or Baur area of Bangladesh. And khaki Campbell varieties are found more suitable in this culture, about 300 to 500 number of um, uh, duck per hectare of duckling are uh, reared uh, to fertilize uh, the one hectare pond. The duck acts as a live aerator and controls the aquatic woods, that is uh, lemna, azula, aquatic insect, mollusks, and tadpoles, etc. Total production is about 3,500 uh, 3, to 5,000 uh, uh, kg fish and 18,000 to 18,500 eggs and 600 kg of duck meat is produced from uh, this system. The duck dropping are used as manure in primary production. Uh, it is practicing in my country. Cattle come fish culture, it is also practicing in my country, a common practice all over the world. The cow excreta is most abundant in terms of availability and health cow may excrete over 4,000 to 5,000 kg dung. The beauty of cow manure is lower than the livestock manure. About five to six cow can provide adequate manure for one hectare ponds area. In addition, 9,000 kg milk and about 3,000 to 4,000 kg of fish annually will be produced. Uh, this is a very important um, um, fish farming in uh, Bangladesh. This is a very, very uh, latest um, uh, bottom clean race of upon aquaculture technology uh, is starting in Bangladesh. Highly intensive, the production is minimum 10 to higher metric ton per hectare. Uh, this is the uh, system, this is the round type, this is the circular type, and all the uh, when uh, every day, uh, the when the fish supply, uh, 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 supply as a food of fish, and the excretory uh, of the uh, unused feed um, settled in the center of the pond and there is a pipe and uh, every day it is removed from the pond and um, uh, from the pond and um, uh, placed to another pond. Uh, another pond technology is uh, uh, very, uh, very, uh, another here, uh, without, without feed, the fish is, fish culture is practiced. Uh, there is a two opportunity here. Bioflock fish farming. 
Bifoc fish farming is an eco-friendly technique that has served well to provide a solution to many challenges faced in terms of food, resource, land, water, and environment. Bifoc ecoculture system is an advanced technique uh, uh, technique for fish farming tech, uh, system where waste materials derived from unused feed, facilities mass, uh, other are converted into microbial protein as food for altered stocks but the problem is that what is happening what is happening in that case uh, um, in that case the uh, bioflock uh, is uh, starting in bangladesh uh, just like a hemilunar bashiola but it is not sustained still now because uh, there are so many difficulties in the system now i want to say techni technology uh, apply in uh, production of Hilsa fisheries, that is Tenilusa Ilsa conservation and management. National fish, Hilsa contribute about 12.15% uh, of total production. Hilsa sector contribute on livelihood and coastal fishers. Here, I want to say, um, to, uh, um, here, uh, a huge uh, uh, number of um, uh, uh, fishers are involved in Hilsa fisheries in the uh, Magna, Podda, um, uh, the Rufsa, um, uh, different ponds, uh, um, uh, lives in different poly, uh, different villages uh, beside the river. So it's a very important. Hilsa produ uh, production increased from 2.792 to 5.5 lakh metric ton between 2007 to 8 to uh, last year. Growth rate is 4.19, and Hilsa have been declared as a geographical indicator of Bangladesh. And activities implemented uh, for production. What is the uh, activities? Conservation of brood Hilsa in quick spawning period. The, what, what is the most, most spawning period? It is September to October. Hilsa breed every uh, month in a year, but the peak season is September to October, and band period of spawning. Four days before full moon, uh, plus one day full moon, sep uh, 71 days after full moon. This is, that is uh, the month of September to October. Banning illegal catching of jatka and provide food ingredient, uh, food support to the fishermen, uh, to the um, uh, river, um, um, bank of the riverside area. Hello. Here is the scenario of the uh, production of Hisha. It is increasing 2006 7 to last year. Uh, there is an increasing tendency, and remarkable uh, production was found uh, in Hilsa fishery. In that case, um, uh, here there, there is a Bay of Bengal. Uh, Bay of Bengal, too. This is the river. Uh, this is the Magna. This is the um, uh, another river here. Uh, there are uh, six century June is divided here. This is green color. Uh, um, uh, this is um, uh, green color. This is um, uh, red, um, um, uh, reddish color. That is blue color. Like this, there are um, uh, six centuries here, and uh, the management is uh, divided into six centuries. And eight months long ban of catching hilsa and jatka and other fishing uh, are prohibited in this zone between March to April. About 40 kilometer stress of the Andarmanic nursery ground, that is this area, Andarmanic nursery ground. Um, nursery ground is in Potuakali, Kolapara, fishing banned between November to January. And Bangladesh observed that conservation weak across the country, aiming to uh, mobilize the people to conserve the hills of fry. And other activities during this time. Uh, 46,778 uh, metric ton rice is distributed to how many Jatka fishermen? 3,1288 Jatka fishermen uh, in 20 districts. They will be close to uh, Bay of Bengal. And uh, in uh, last year, 56,224 uh, to uh, 88 metric ton distributed to auto fishermen in 20 districts. Oh, sorry, sorry, huh. uh, districts. That is the last year, this is the uh, uh, 1920. Uh, 20. In the same time, input of alternative income generated distributed to uh, 32,509 fishers families. Hilsa production doubled over the 12 years 
but technologies are by taking the government's efforts, including ban and catching boatfish and jatka. Implementation of Janka conservation program, management of century, and implementation of Hilsha spawning protection. This is the Hilsha um, uh, matter. And floodplain management, it is also a good management, stocking of fingerling, including in, uh, endangered species, uh, species. Natural recruitment of carp and other native fishes are declining due to loss of habitat by we know uh, it is all, all this factor is known to us that is filtration of the river pollution over exploitation of fish collection of fry from the natural resource uh, introduction of exotic species without proper research uh, indiscriminate use of pesticide for crop and production this is the main issue to destroy the natural uh, production of um, floodplain. To improve the productivity from open water, initiated regular program of releasing fingerlings. Every year in my country, this type of water body, we release the fingerlings. And uh, in 1984, uh, 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 metric ton fish fingerlings were released. And extra 0.456 metric ton per hectare was uh, produced in this floodplain, and here is the floodplain as a tube uh, establishment of bill nursery. Uh, it is another technology. Area of bill nursery were 14,770 hectares, and number of producing fingerling 120.30 million metric uh, million million, not metric ton. Total fish production of the bill nurseries was. Uh, the production is 1.102 metric ton per hectare. Uh, this is the um, uh, uh, before two years ago. As a result, extra fish production was increased and endangered, endangered fish species is reappeared in this area. Establishment of uh, fish century. It is uh, established century to uh, for shelter the different type of species. And um, uh, this is the one kind of yeah, fish habitat re rehabilitation. What is happening? Restored the fish habitat. The government has taken various type of in a Last six years, 200, uh, 2,100 hectare water area are excavated or excavated pro 10 development project and produced uh, 3,000 metric ton additional fish per year by implementing this kind of activities. Here, natural breeding ground conservation. And uh, drop, Department of Fisheries has taken conserve the natural breeding ground of major crops in the river Howl and Bowl. Howl River is only Indian major crop, uh, natural breeding ground in the country. Declared 40 kilometers of Howl River as a century and catching of fish is prohibited throughout the year. Six hatcheries established in the near the bank of the Howl River and collecting eggs and has in the hatcheries and supply throughout the country. During last five years, uh, 600 zero, uh, 642 kg has been produced from the uh, collecting act and this is distributed uh, to the different parts of the country. This is the uh, scenario of the Halda River. Here is the, this is the up down, uh, up down, uh, um, this is decreasing, decreasing, uh, increasing, decreasing. What is happening? If the ecological factor is not um, uh, support the river of Halda uh, and the brute fish, uh, which is very important issue uh, is not available in the river. Then how will find find how will um, find the production of spawn natural spawn in the river? So we have to ensure this um, um, these uh, factors in the river. Extension of pen farming in potential water bodies. It is the um, this is called pen. It, it is a, a one type of enclosure of fish culture. The bottom of the enclosure is from river, meal, and any other water body. Uh, bottom pens are constructed nylon or polythene mesh nets, traditional bamboo. Here is the this is the net. And traditional fish production has been increased 0.11 lakh metric ton um, to uh, 0.124 metric ton last one year ago. And what is happening in case culture, potential water body? Uh, case culture, this is the scenario of case culture. Case is blocked with nets, bamboo, and floors in water. Cases are usually floated in rock. Uh, case is totally enclosed on all but the top side of by mass and netting. Fish cases are used in shallow water with appropriate muddy bottom. Total fish production has been increased. That is 0 0.035 metric ton to uh, 0 0.038 uh, lakh metric ton. Uh, this is the scenario 
uh, now I want to say threats to aquatic biodiversity, what is happening? World population, this is the report of FAO, points, uh, 6.9 billion, uh, the population, world population will be increased points, uh, 6.9 billion to 9 billion, and global cereal demand will be grow from 2.1 to 3 billion metric ton, a billion ton um, in 2000, within 2050. So, rise in the population of the country and a great challenge to meet up dietary demand of the general mass people that disappear the species by anthropogenic activities at an alarming rate between 1975 and uh, 2015 occur 1.11% species extinction per decade and aquatic species are at a higher risk of extinction than mammals of birds and freshwater and marine ecosystem face similar threats in uh, uh, in, uh, in Bangladesh uh, or not only Bangladesh all over the country uh, world here sorry here challenges of fisheries resource fisheries resources faced but with challenges caused by numerous natural and anthropogenic causes such as what is climatic climate change, natural disaster, environmental pollution, industrialization, overfishing, ease of uh, destructive fishing gear, pesticide, agrochemicals, some important national program and biological management technologies should be developed for fish production. And CBMC is to be applied for uh, water management to restrict the uh, declination of resource and enhance biological management for the production, CBMC. That is, um, uh, there is a um, um, cooperative management policy. What is uh, happening uh, day to uh, COVID-19? Both lives and li uh, livelihood are at risk and income uh, economics impacts will be uh, was felt more and demand and price are, uh, already decreased. Now it is increased. This is a scenario. Food demand decreases, uh, not decreases. Now it is the slide of before. Effect of climate change. What is the happening? Changes in air temperature influence changes in water temperature, changes in precipitation timing and amount of effect water quality and quantity and timing of flows. Thermal expansion, uh, polar melting causes sea level rise, increasing atmospheric carbon dioxide and decrease by uh, pH and sea level rise. Cyclone intensity, uh, intensity and uh, frequency, flood intensity and frequency. Uh, uh, erratic uh, rainfall and drought, river bank erosion, river bank erosion, uh, uh, deeper penetration of saline water, deeper uh, and health and food security. Affect the climate change, uh, change the air temperature, influences changes the water changes, and here thermal expansion and polar melting causes sea level rise. I, I already double slide. Aquatic ecosystem impact, decreasing oxygen concentration and release from sediment, increasing thermal stability, altered mixing pattern in lakes, species moving up in altitude and latitude, changing, what is changing? Changing species composition, changing seasonality, productivity of plankton, and changing food oil interaction. Increase dissolved, uh, dissolved organic carbons and altered biogeochemical cycle and changes, probably increase, uh, change, and uh, net primary productivity. This is the scenario. Another issue is for agriculture, that is aligned species control. Exotic uh, and aligned species, sorry. Negative impact on environment and economy and uh, human health increase predation and competition, the, uh, disease, habitat, destruction, genetic stock, alternation, and even extinction. Species include plants, fishes, uh, fishes algae, molasses, mollusks, uh, crustaceans, bacteria, and viruses. More than 19 species introduced in aquaculture sector in Bangladesh, banning for uh, pirhana and African magu to stop uh, illegal production in hatchery, uh, um, um, hatchery um, the rules and regulation is already applied. Now I want to say what is happening here, yeah, this kind of species, that is that is um, uh, that is uh, the species uh, uh, that is uh, species uh, African magur. It is from Thailand. Now this species is found uh, our native river. It is a 
very very burning issue for uh, fisheries uh, in river fishery system in river because it is a um, uh, it, 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 this piece um, uh, is very um, serious for um, our native fish um, uh, that is uh, compete uh, the uh, always with other fish here the scenario of the year annual export of fish and fish product uh, this is the burning issue uh, we are um, uh, producing fish uh, this is that is the formation of frozen shrimp prawn live fish frozen fish chill fish dry fish salted and dehydrated fish crab and uh, shim, uh, and uh, fish mow and uh, uh, like this and what is happening why i discuss it the uh, 12 percent of uh, total manpower is engaged all these are frozen shrimp live fish uh, processing frozen fish processing chill fish processing dry fish processing and we are incoming uh, for an exchange uh, now social aspect assessment what is the social aspect uh, the standard of living uh, just the land right land right uh, we have established for the uh, fishermen fishermen fishers like uh, who is engaged in uh, fishery sector uh, we have established um, uh, 17% now on uh, living environment um, uh, we have established in 80% uh, indigenous right is 766% and <clears throat> food security uh, we can um, um, establish we can um, support the uh, food security is 85% <clears throat> and relationship uh, with the human um, uh, human right uh, is um, uh, another issue uh, socio economic factors is 68% and gender aspect 70% uh, health and safety is 88% land is 70% here now i want to say upgradation of <coughs> education status between 2001 to 2020 uh, 201980 what is happening there in case of education uh, we can uh, we can um, uh, establish the right of uh, fishers, fishermen, uh, like uh, the person who are engaged in the fishery sector. Uh, in 2001 and two, this is the blue color. What is the uh, position? That is illiterate was uh, 50% and primary level so, um, yeah, 32% and secondary was 16% and um, um, uh, undergraduate 2%. And this was not, but in 2010 and 11, uh, the this is the red 32 percent. Uh, this uh, uh, decrease and uh, this is increased 22 percent. Uh, 22 percent. This is 20 percent. That is 16 percent. That is 8 percent and 20 percent. And last year of the this is the whole scenario. That is illiterate 9 percent. Uh, primary uh, level is 20 percent and secondary level is 24 percent and undergraduate 22 percent and graduated 15 percent and master's level uh, is uh, um, uh, five percent in case of housing status between 2001 and two to 2019 uh, 20 what is happening uh, it is uh, safe water in case of safe water uh, no safe water uh, 2001 to 55 uh, percent uh, there was no safe water and uh, uh, yeah, 21 percent was um, um that's a problem um and and uh, in case of uh, um uh, in case of um, last year what is happening um there is no no um, uh, no um, no um, facilities of uh drinking water but it is increased this is increased 35 percent 33 percent and uh 32 percent um this is the scenario and in case of drinking water uh, facilities this is the um, uh, upgradation uh, also upgradation uh, 2001 and 2 the scenario was this 50 percent and um, um, uh, here is a, the, some um, um, the categories and and uh, 2010 and 11 uh, this is the um, um, reddish color and uh, um, uh, this is this is the scenario of the um, this scenario and last year's scenario is a blue color 
uh, this is the 42 uh, percent. They, uh, they established the right 42 uh, percent um, of um, drinking water um, in case of drinking water. Salin sanitary facilities uh, in case of the uh, they can establish, uh, I think, um, Kacha, Kacha, that is 62 um, percent, uh, 60. Um, 37 percent and 7 percent and semi pakka that is um, uh, 27 percent 36 percent and 41 percent last year um, uh, 90, um, last year and pakka what is 11 percent uh, chilo um, was 11 percent and uh, middle middle stage uh, it was 27 percent and last year 52 percent and in case of health facilities um, Health facilities that is um, uh, um, village doctor it was the uh, uh, fifty nine percent and district area uh, was uh, level was eight percent and uh, in blue color uh, that is middle middle position is thirty seven percent and it was eleven percent uh, district level and uh, community level upadala that is thana level and in case of nineteen uh, last year uh, this is uh, the the tendency of um, the um, Tendency of uh, going to doctor, the commodity level is increased, uh, Thana level is increased, district level is increased. In case of electricity facility, uh, it is a um, modern uh, indicator of uh, um, um, socio-economic development. Here, um, once uh, we know that hurricanes, uh, that is uh, 2001 to uh, two, this was the scenario, um, um, candle like this, Solar panel like this, electricity like this, and mid level is for uh, this. This is the scenario. This is the scenario. And final, uh, we, last year, in case of hurricane, it was uh, now uh, decrease and uh, candle already. It, it is also decreasing and uh, solar panel is increasing uh, and electricity is 60% uh, covering. Here, occupational status are between the, um, uh, by this time. Fish farming ability. What is uh, 2001 and two uh, was uh, that was uh, that is red color 30 percent and uh, business 26 uh, percent and others 22 uh, percent and others 20 uh, percent. And um, last year the position was the fish farming. The ability is increased 48 percent and business 23 percent. It, it is going to decrease. They are interested to uh, establish um, uh, fish farming and also another year and others uh, it is decreasing. This is the same. Now I want to say <clears throat> fish as a tree for sound uh, health. Uh, there, what is it? Omega-3 fatty acid prevents or reduce corona heart disease and fatty acid minimizes corona uh, plug or lower triglyceride level uh, uh, yeah, uh, for blood pressure. Fish is great sources of protein who is maintains healthy muscles, organs, and blood vessel. Protein supports cell division, hair growth, and hormone uh, singling. Fish is rich is iodine and direct function on human thyroid gland and control things like appetite and immune system. Fish is a good source of nutrients like vitamin D, vitamin B12, iron, phosphorus, niacin. A standard three ounce of serving of back herring fish content, this is the herring fish uh, content, calories 173 and protein 20 gram, fat 10 gram, carbohydrate less than one gram, fiber, um, fiber one gram, and sugar less than um, two gram. Here's the scenario. And I want to say another scenario of a uh, one fish that is called Kutia monotrus Kutia. What is happening in that case? It is known to um, uh, uh, basically uh, it is very popular fish in uh, uh, East Asian countries and even in India, Eastern uh, uh, that is uh, hilly area countries. Um, uh, this fish is very popular. What is the tribal people belongs to in our country? This is called Garo. Hazong uh, Sawatali and Coach Rajbongshi community. This piece is to uh, therapy and traditionally used as a treatment of weakness, anemia, uh, asthma, um, hemorrhoids, and uh, diabetes. Direct consumption of fresh blood, cure weakness, anemia, and uh, asthma. And from cooking the flesh alone, cure uh, anemia, 
pulse and diabetes. Content of exogram of raw flesh of this species was 18.7 gram protein, 0.8 gram fats, 2.4 gram carbohydrate, and 180 gram calcium. And uh, essential amino acid is found um, in the aline, uh, arginine, uh, glycine, uh, histi histidine, leucine, and methionine. A tremendous demand of Puchia is in the international market for nutritional uh, importance in my country. Now I want to uh, say about the recommendation, the action plan efforts for saving the stock of fish to upgrade the socioeconomic condition uh, in all the indicators should be developed uh, for their for, the, for them. Implement hills of fishery management technology in all the open water bodies and this ecosystem of wetland and the river. Declare the basins of the river as a conservation, upgrade management for the conservation and control over uh, exploitation and illegal fishing and prevention of harvesting and brood fishes and ensure sufficient water flow in the river, control natural and uh, um, Anth uh, anthropogenizing causes uh, rice fish farming is more uh, uh, remunerative uh, than rice soil culture in terms of net returns and benefit rest um, cost ratio. And continue fish production, maintaining fish supply chain um, to overcome the um, uh, uh, decreasing condition of COVID-19 and keep international market um, uh, to open uh, for, uh, in uh, government level. Uh, this is the uh, recommendation. And now I want to say our great leader, uh, um, the speech of great leader, let us together create a world that can eradicate poverty, hunger, war, and human suffering and achievement goals, peace, and uh, yeah, the humanity. This is the uh, speech of our father of nation. Uh, we feel the uh, every word of the sentence uh, what to do for the future. Uh, thank you. Thank you to all. Uh, I have tried to uh, discuss um, uh, um, the, all the sectors uh, of the fish, fisheries and aquaculture. And thank you uh, to all the audience to hear my uh, lecture presently. Again, thank you. Thank you to all. Hello. 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 Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir, for your uh, wonderful lecture on, uh, on the role of aquaculture uh, for rural development in Bangladesh. Uh, if, if any uh, questions, audience, I request you to ask. Okay, I am waiting for that. Yes. You just uh, st stop your sc uh, screen, sir. Hello. Can I stop now? Yeah, yeah. Professor Chakravarti, you just stop your screen sharing so okay. that uh, yes. admin can do the further procedure. Yes, okay. Uh, if uh, no questions, okay. So I I request uh, the session chairperson, uh, Principal Dr. Vishwas Kandare sir, Principal Kalika Devi Arts, Commerce and Science College, Shirur Kasar, District Bid, to give a session remark. Principal Dr. Vishwas Kandare sir, over to you sir. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, today, 
इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड एक्वाकल्चर फॉर रूरल डेवलपमेंट गुड आफ्टरनून सर टू डे टू वन एंड ऑल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वे हैव ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमिटी ऑफ इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस इन एक्वाकल्चर फॉर द रूरल डेवलपमेंट ऑर्गेनाइज अंडर बिटवीन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जूलॉजी आदर्श शिक्षण संस्था कालिके देवी आर्ट्स एंड कॉमर्स साइंस चिरूर कासार डिस्ट्रिक्ट बीड एबिलिटेड डॉक्टर बाबा साहब आंबेडकर मराठवाड़ा यूनिवर्सिटी महाराष्ट्र एंड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जूलॉजी ऑफ द लेट आर्ट्स कॉमर्स साइंस कॉलेज सोनपेट डिस्ट्रिक्टेड एस आर पी यूनिवर्सिटी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जूलॉजी दादा पाटिल राजड़े आर्ट साइंस एंड कॉमर्स कॉलेज पाथर्डी डिस्ट्रिक्ट अहमदनगर एफिलेटेड सावित्री फुले पुणे यूनिवर्सिटी पुणे वेरी नाइस रिसर्च पर्सन मस्ट बी इन आजादी आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव इस दिन से शुरू शुरू जो ऑर्गेनाइज किया इन थ्री कॉलेज डिपार्टमेंट्स वेरी नाइस मस्ट बी मिलिया कॉलेज एंड साइंस मैनेजमेंट कॉलेज बीड एफिलेटेड डॉक्टर बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर मराठवाड़ा यूनिवर्सिटी वी वुड लाइक टू वेलकम ऑल डेलीगेट्स पार्टिसिपेंट्स फॉर द इंटर इंटरनेशनल इवेंट्स डियर माई फ्रेंड एंड डेलीगेट्स अंगर एंड मल्टीशियन रिमेन एमंग द मोस्ट डिवाइसिंग प्रॉब्लम फेसिंग द वर्ल्ड पुअर द प्योर स्टेट ऑफ फूड इंसेक्टी रिपोर्ट स्टैट्स दैट developing nations are not getting enough food to lead normal early and active lies food demand and in particular the demand for fish has con uh, continued to rise and it is the forecast that expanding pollution and changing eating habits will make will be a food output imperative the next 30 years this demand mainly has to be met from local food uh, production system aquaculture of the people both in sector itself as well as support service it also generates in income and the price for must be commodity duties fall fish price are the expected to rise reflecting the impact between demand of the su supply with this i would like to extend my sense of the gratitude this gift to guys the guest please allow me to express my sense appearance to very nice this uh, conference international conference one day aquaculture for the rural developments uh, resource persons very good persons और चीफ ऑर्गेनाइजर राजदर टेमकर डॉक्टर वसंत सातपुते सर मुहम्मद इलेस फाजिल सर गवर्नर अतुल चोपकार सर डॉक्टर संतोष रनखम सर डॉक्टर इन माय कॉलेज कलीग तनवीर पठान सर डॉक्टर शायरी अब्दुल इन इन माय गवर्नर वेरी वेरी नाइस दिस रिसर्च पर्सन कॉन्फरन्स जस्ट टॉपिक रूरल 
role of the agriculture for the rural development in Bang Bangladesh. Very nice re resource person, um, very present, uh, much be information uh, in zoology departments. Very nice. All, all the before must be like uh, I take my leave of. I would like to remain you efficiently our monitors to stick to our time schedule and not to late any sessions. I sincerely I hope you will enjoy today event networking. Thank you for your participants and your delegates and resource persons, governor, uh, organizer. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Principal Dr. Vishwas Kandari, sir, for your kind words and give the session remark of the plenary session second. I also thankful to Binay Kumar Chakravarti, sir, uh, to give the information about role of aquaculture for rural development. Uh, before conclude and before vote of thanks, I would like to uh, request all of you to start your cameras. So I I take a snap for ourselves. To start, everyone to start the cameras. Okay. Just a minute. Just all are requested to start the camera. Speaker. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, if, uh, Before vote of thanks, I wish I I wish that today is a Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore birth anniversary. So I wish you all the same. And this conference dedicated to Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore. Sir. Now I request uh, Dr. Sairi Abdullah sir, convener of this international conference on aquaculture for rural development, to give vote of thanks. Hello. Good afternoon all, dear parents, dear participants. Firstly, I must thanks to Almighty for his mercy and help. On behalf of entire organizing committee, I must thanks to the chief guest, Professor Dr. Kusum Arunachalam, for her vital time from her busy schedule to grace this conference. Then I would also thank all the speakers, Professor Kusum Arunachalam, Dr. Dilip Kumar Jha, and Dr. Binay Kumar Chakravarti. I also thank to our patrons, Honorable Shri Appa Sahib Radhare, Honorable Shri Parmeshwar Kadam, Honorable Shri Jaida Tanna Sesagar, and Honorable Mrs. Khan Sabiha Begum for encouraging us and believing us in Friends, any conference is not possible without good audience. I must thank all the faculties, students, participants, and principals and conveners for making this conference a great success. I also thank all the colleagues who extended support for making this event a success. Thanks again. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Sari Abdullah, sir, for your kind words. So, with the permission of the chair, I conclude concluded that uh, this international conference is over. Thank you for your kind uh, stay with us. I put the feedback link on the chat, so you can you can give the feedback. So you can receive the e certificate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Can we stop? Yes, yes, yes. You can stop the.
हा एक कंबाईन फोटो घ्या ना सर्वांचा कॉमन का घेतलाय 